Greetings, I'm Parents, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today, we're going to complete our playthrough of Sleeping Gods. That's right, this is going to be the last one. We're going to go through the whole rest of this deck, and we're also going to do the ending. If you don't want to know the ending spoilers, that's totally fine. You can stop it at that point, but, and you'll make sure you know when it happens, so don't worry. <laughs> we're going to continue going forward. In the last video, we did a lot of exploring. We actually were planning to go north, but we ended up actually going back south toward Elzaria, and now we're totally in a new jungle area, so we're going to go ahead and check it out. Now, if you're excited to do that, then I need you to meet me at the table. I always try to start out with a panned out view of the crew so you can see where everybody's at. We have a lot of really cool skills slotted in. These are all experience skills. I actually haven't slotted in any cards. So what you see on the characters is what they've gained over the course of their adventure here in the world of Sleeping Gods. We have a couple people with some fatigue. Only Kasumi is hurt. She only has one damage on her. So our crew is actually doing really well and I think it's time to start exploring. I also haven't shown this in a long time. These are all the cards that we've accrued over the course of our game of Sleeping Gods. And some have been used and some have really not been utilized as much as they probably should have. I'm gonna actually go ahead and take all this off because we're moving into our ship phase and I'm gonna go ahead and remove all this by going to the bridge. But I just wanted you to take a look at everything we have. Like I haven't really used my studded leather much. I probably should, I've never used her, but that's okay. We also have some things I'm not even sure what they do, but <laughs> maybe someday we will. Let's go ahead and start our ship actions. Like I said, we're gonna go ahead and go to the bridge and clear all of the uh, command off of everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and gain three, and then we're gonna go ahead and do our, oh, we get to draw a card. I almost always forget to draw a card. Let's see what we get. We have gotten a five, which I'm gonna put right back in the deck because I want fives and sixes in there. Let's see what happens to us. We have found floating jellyfish. Glowing jellyfish float through the air, surrounding the ship under a gray sky. Catch a jellyfish, savvy eight. Two venom, or hit the, jelly, hit the jellyfish away. Draw fate. If it's one to three, negative four health. Okay, I'm going to do that one because I don't want to get any of this venom and I don't feel like trying to do a savvy eight skill. So let's just go ahead and hit these jellyfish and get them away. On a one to three, something bad happens. We got a four. Perfect. So nothing happens if I remember it. It says right down here, one to three, negative four health. So no, nothing happened to us. That's fantastic. I'm a big fan of nothing happening to us. Let's go ahead and move into our two actions. We ended over here outside of Hunter's Haven. And before we go, I do want to mention that I'm having so much fun with this game that I actually just kept recording. So this is actually recorded back to back with the last video. So if there were any mistakes, I'm not gonna be able to correct them, but that's okay. We're having a blast. And this game is fairly uh, easy mechanically. It's just such a great experience to explore. So let's go ahead first and speaking of exploring, check out Hunter's Haven. So we don't have point or camp, so we're gonna continue on to Hunter's Haven. The boats anchored at Hunter's Haven are painted with elegant patterns from stern to stern. Rich reds and yellows, deep browns and shining whites, and shades of blue from the brightest sky to the deepest midnight adorn the vessels, livening the harbor like a holiday festival. The site is not so festive on the shores. Zokmir hunters camp here. Their yellowed tents encircle a cooking fire and a row of carving tables and beyond a collection of hanging animal skins like a grisly boundary against the jungle. On the edge of the camp, a miserable pile of caged animals chirp, squawk, and growl. We have five options. E is leave, I'm not even putting it on the screen. We can A, talk to the hunters, B, investigate the animal cages. I can't do that if I have animals. I can buy food, pay two coins to gain two meat. Ooh, that's not bad. Or trade the toadberg eggs. I don't have any egg keyword cards. So let's start by talking to the hunters. An old hunter cloaked in scraps of green and gray and hair tied in long silvery ponytails tells you of his search for the elusive toadbird eggs. Every time we reach the nesting ground, giant spiny lizards attack us. I've lost five friends in the hunt, last hunt, and one of the lizards took half my hand for his supper. He lifts his hand to show three fingers chewed down to the knuckle. 
If you bring me back those eggs, I'd be willing to part with a rare artifact, says the hunter. So we're going to gain quest 142. It is Toadbird Eggs. A Zokmir hunter said he would give us rare artifact if we found some Toadbird eggs in the jungle. The eggs are in the large jungle island in the north, and we should start in the southwestern beach. We now return to number 10. At this point, we can go ahead and investigate the caged animals or buy food. I think we're going to go over the animals and see what happens. Cacophony erupts as you approach the cages. Frantic birds blur the, their colorful feathers like a kaleidoscope. Lizards with green marbly eyes watch you suspiciously from the driftwood perches. Obsidian-haired monkeys shriek and smack the bars of their cages. And a boar with a stony scale slams again and again into the door of the cage. So I have two options. One, I can calm the animals and free them without being caught. Perception 9. Or leave the animals for now, turn to 10. Oh, it's a tough choice. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to leave them for now because I want to get that egg. And if I can come back, then I think we're going to try to free these animals. Because if I free the animals, I notice there's a keyword animals. I'm guessing that's going to change a lot of what happens on this island. So I want to make sure we do the egg first. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just leave them for now. The last thing we are going to do is we are going to pay two coins for two meat. I've got my two meat right here. We're going to go ahead and take those. And then I'm going to change a five into a three, giving us, oh, not, we would have five, 10, 15, 18, 19 bucks. That's totally fine. The large island to the north he's probably talking about is this one. He said to start at the southwest beach, which is right where we were. So I'm going to go ahead and use our Hellfire Coal. We're going to go ahead and put our command on there to move the ship three distance. I'm just going to move it two, one, two. Now, of course, we do have to do a savvy five test, and that's totally fine. Let's go ahead and take our card and see what we get. We got a three. Okay. But, oh, I got that savvy card, I think, in my inventory. Yes, I do, right here. We're going to go ahead and use that. I'm going to use one command on that to give myself two more. Savvy, bring it to five. We don't have to worry about it. Now, for our second action, we're going to check out 101, because remember, that coal is not an action. 101. If you have keyword toad, turn to 101.3. Totally doing it. A light mist falls on the jungle before you. Max studies a scribbled map of the Zokmir hunter's previous expedition, and you begin the search for the toad bird eggs. The air is thick, and you're dripping with sweat, and the dewy leaves launch endless attacks of unnatural large bugs onto your crew. I would never find the eggs. Huge centipedes. Oh, yuck, and spiders. Hey, from gnarled silk strands. A pack of red-eyed, obsidian-haired monkeys watch you suspiciously as you cross a brown stream. Sweat-coated and hungry, you stop in the closest thing to a clearing you can find. We're almost there, says Mac, with a massive lizard with a fin-like a sailfish crashes through the bushes, rumbling the ground with his massive weight. Do we stand and fight, level 14, or do we try to hide, perception 7? We stand and fight! It's only level 14. I think we should be okay. Here's 66 and 71. We're just going to shuffle them up a little bit, throw them down. We have to fight an enraged and a dire Spinosaurus. All right, so <laughs> we got something going on here. I get two command for the start of the combat. We're going to go ahead and grab our action cubes here. And I've got a lot of command up here as well. So I'm just going to slot it all right here because we might need it. This guy has a seven. I guarantee you we're going to be using the plus two to hit in order to hit that guy. All right, let's see who we're going to start with. This guy's a level 10. I think we're going to try to take this guy out first so we don't have to worry about him going back at us. Three, four, five. We need to do five damage to him. I wonder if that's going to be possible. I think it is. I think I have a plan. We're going to go ahead and start with Kanan. Kanan's going to go ahead and go first. He's got that pistol, and he gets to put things diagonally, and he gets plus two to his attack. So he has plus three. He only needs a two or better to hit. Let's see how we do. We got a four. We totally hit that. At this point, I am going to use one of my command to go ahead and throw it up here on the tusk, giving me plus two damage, which is going to be perfect because I'm going to go ahead and place one, two, three, and then four and five, or I should say one, two, three, four, five, just like that. I use the wrong cube, but that's okay. This guy's done. Now all we have to do, all we have to do is deal with this guy. He's going to go ahead and place this. I do get to pass my token if I wish to, and I think I will. I'm going to pass this token over to Audrey. Audrey's going to take the token, and we're going to go ahead and put him back. Next, Audrey's going to come into battle here. She's got her four damage. Let's see what she can do with that. Hopefully a lot. That's going to be the plan. She's going to go ahead and slot this right here, and she's going to go with a plus two. She needs a ton. She needs a five or better. Oh, because this could be really bad. Let's see how this goes for us. We got a two. That's terrible. We're going to draw that again. We're going to use this card right here. That's what we have to do. All right, come on. We need to get this. Come on. Five or better. Five or better. Let's see what we do. Let's draw our card. Come on. No, oh, it's only a three. Okay, three, four, five. I can do my plus two. I get a plus two somewhere out here. I know one of my cards gives it to me. Which one is it? 
it's one of my artifacts that I've put in one big giant pile when I was showing them to you. All right, here we go. We're going to use this one. I'm going to go ahead and place this right here. When I was showing you all the things, I actually forgot to show you all my artifacts I have. <laughs> they were all underneath one card. All right, we got two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven. We're able to do four. At this point, I am going to go ahead and use this to take the command off of my horn, to put it back on my horn. That's how we're going to do this. And we're going to do a ton of damage now. So now we're doing four five six damage i think is what we're going to do yes it is so let's go ahead and place those out on our super dinosaur here and we're definitely not taking this guy out in one turn six one two three four five six we are totally going to do what you call neuter this guy because now he's doing only five damage before he would have done an astronomical amount of damage five minus one is four she is still alive She's going to take four damage from the counterattack from this dire Spinosaurus. Yuck. And we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, I do get to pass my token. We're going to pass this token over to, I think we're going to pass it to Laurent. He might need this token. We're going to give it to Laurent, and she's going to go back over here. And now we're going to bring him out. He's got her token, which is awesome. And he's got these knives. These knives are plus four. So he should be able to hit pretty well with this. Let's see how we do we got, a, we got a three. Okay, so he was able to hit. That's awesome. Four, five, six, seven. That hits him. He does one, two, three, four damage. Let's see what we can do with that. We can go one, two, three, four damage right there. He gets to pass his token. Now, sadly, look at this. I've left myself with some of these things that aren't going to help us too much. Ah, that's okay. Now, he doesn't get any defense from this, so he's just going to take five straight damage and bonk, he's knocked out. But that's okay. We're going to pass our token back over to her, and he's going to gain one of these tokens. And now we're going to move into somebody else's turn. Now, this guy's going to get a chance to fight because I don't have any way of being able to actually deal with this. Does the card I have to discard? If I get to pass this token, it's not really going to help me too much. I think we're going to pass it over to Mac. Mac's going to go ahead and take a swing. Mac's got this. Now, she has her plus one here with her saber, and she also gets a defense with it. So she's at plus five to hit with this thing. So let's go ahead and see how we do. Come on, let's go. Come on. Three plus five is seven, what, eight. I think it was eight. We did two, three. I can do a total of three. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to hit him right here and cover up these two places. She's going to take five damage back, but I can go ahead and cover. I get one defense with my saber, so she's not quite dead yet. She's going to take four. I didn't use this, and I, but I think I'll give it right back because there's not any reason to have it. We're going to go ahead and place her back over here, and that's just fine. Oh, I knocked all the things off her. That's okay. Now we're going to go ahead and move into the monster's turn. The monster is actually going to go ahead and hit because we have to give our last cube to Mac. Hit us for five. So I have to put five damage on somebody. Guess who gets it? You got it. We're going to give it all to Raphael. He can take it. That's totally fine. Now it goes back into our turn again. I'm going to bring Mac back out just because she's got the best accuracy of the group. She's got five accuracy. Let's see how she does. We're going to go ahead and hit this guy. Two plus five is seven. That's enough. Boom, we hit him for two. That's totally fine because if she only does two, it's only got two. So we're going to, we would have taken all our cubes back, put one back on her, but I only need to hit him once. We're totally done. She was able to kill him off. Oh, one of her health fell off. She's actually supposed to have four damage. This guy's dead. We have successfully completed this battle, and we're going to, I only have one command left. And we're going to go to see what happens to the our brave crew once the battle's over. After defeating the lizard, it tells us to go to 101.2. The spiny lizard collapsed to the ground, leaving you free to search for the eggs. After an hour of searching, you spy a nest of glittering blue eggs under a stony ledge. That's it, says Raphael excitedly. After collecting the eggs, you trek back to the ship, gain two materials. You also get three meat. Oh, I don't even have enough meat to get three meat. And three experience points. And we complete quest 142 and gain quest 145. We're going to go ahead and gain what we can. We don't have any more meat that we can get, and all these are finite, so I can't just write the word meat on a piece of paper. We're going to go ahead and remove our quest and gain this one. Toadbird eggs found. We found the toadbird eggs in the jungle. Now we need to talk and take them back to the Zokmir hunting camp. So let's go ahead and put this with the rest of our stuff. We're going to move into our turn. I'm going to go down to the quarters because I need to get rid of some of the this on our stuff here. It's absolutely ridiculous how much we have out here. We're going to go ahead, remove one from the stone or the horn and i think we're going to move one from our wayfarer's gear that's what we're going to do just in case i need to use it and we'll see how it goes all right actually no i lied we're going to take it from our ghostly uh tool satchel because we might need that to move i'm going to go ahead and put this command all right here now if i'm smart i'm going to put this back on the horn and i'm actually going to take the one from the coal 
we're going to take it from the coal because then I can use the coal. So we've taken one from the coal and from the satchel. Totally fine. Let's go ahead and gain our three command. I've done that. We're going to draw our card and see what we get. We got, what's this? Oh, we got our repair card. Oh, I'm totally slotting that right now underneath her. Now, I have kind of been doing this card wrong, and I might not be, basically, you haven't really seen me using this. When I was playing it before, I was putting this on here to repair one. That's not how this works. You can actually pay as many of these as you want to start repairing your ship. This isn't a place card. It's when you would use this command to repair one. You don't put it on the card. We're going to go ahead and slot that. It's going to cost us one of our command. That's totally fine. It's one of the best cards in the game, I think. Next to the engage card, we're going to draw our card here and see what we found. We found a serpent guide. The Azuri, as your serpent rises from the water, attempt to communicate. Cunning six. Okay, let's attempt to communicate with a cunning six. Do I think it's going to help with cunning? No, but I've got people that are going to help with cunning. We're going to go ahead and give this to the captain. The captain has two cunning. Who else has cunning that could help us out? Nobody really. Oh, Matt, Marco. Marco could help us. Marco's got two cunning as well. He's going to go ahead and grab one of these. Now we're going to draw our card and see how it goes. We need a six. Come on. We got. Oh, we got a two. That's terrible. Two, three, four, oh, four, five, six. We still did it. Two, four, six is perfect. All right. We did actually complete this. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that card. We don't gain anything for it. And we're going to move in our two ship actions. Or not our two ship actions. I'm sorry. Our two normal actions. We are here. We want to be here, we're going to use our coal to get us there. And then we're going to go ahead and check out number 10 so we can give him the egg. Going back to Hunter's Haven, I'm not going to read all that. The one that had to do with egg is 10.6, so we're just going to start there. Beautiful, says the hunter when he sees the glittering blue toad bird egg. You did it! Now, there's a bit of gold to give your pocket some sparkle. Wait a minute, says Mac. You said you had a rare artifact. The hunter hesitates. Did I? What a shame. I traded away just yesterday, but I'll pay you fairly for the egg. What a prize you've brought me. Here, take some more gold. This gold isn't worth half of the artifact, says Mac. Where is it now? A man with a ship like yours wanted it, said the hunter. He paid quite a lot of money for it. He was headed northeast, didn't leave very long ago. So we're going to go ahead and gain 10 coins. That's not bad. And complete quest 145. So we're going to go ahead and discard our Toadberg egg quest and go ahead and gain quest 146. Wow, this guy's taking us a wild goose chase, or should I say Toadberg quest? <laughs> Since he set us on a wild goose chase here, we're going to go ahead and check out quest 146. It says we paid a promised an artifact as payment for a rare toad bird eggs, but another man bought it and sailed northeast from the Hunter's Haven in a ship that looks like ours. So we're going to have to go, um, what did it say? Northeast. So northeast is going to be probably either off the map or in one of these two places. So let's go ahead and check out some of this. I'm just going to go ahead and check out 207. It's in the same area. That's going to be our second action. Well, that was good fortune. If keyword artifact 207.8, I didn't expect it to be right next to us. Let's go ahead and check it out. You spy a steamship anchored near the northern edge of the island. She's a bit of a smaller than the Manticore, says Lorette. Looks old too, Delaware River style construction. As you approach, the crack of gunfire fills the air and bullets fly over the deck. They're aiming at us, Raphael yells, ducking behind uh, the gun wall. We can either fire back with a perception seven, or we can attempt to talk to them. Let's go ahead and talk to them. I mean, why would we want to fire on people that it might just be a misunderstanding here? Cunning eight. So we have to try to do cunning. We're, not, again, not very good at cunning. Huh. All right. I think we're going to divvy out some tokens, which is going to be bad because... <laughs> or I could just take the one ship damage and four health, which isn't the end of the world. We're still going to go to the same place. I think we're going to do that. I'm just going to auto-fail this. Let's go ahead and just see what happens here. Draw my card. We got a five. Oh, wow. We probably could have made it. Oh, no. Look at it. It's the engage card. No, come back, Mr. Engage card. I don't want to leave you. All right. We're going to take one ship damage. Let's see where that ship damage is going to be to number two. Let's go ahead and put that on the deck. And I also have to take four health damage. We're just going to drop all four of it onto Kasumi. No, not onto Kasumi. We're going to put it onto Gregory. Gregory's going to take four. He can totally take that. And we're going to turn to 207.2. You wave a white flag, and eventually the gunfire stops. You approach the ship and hail them from the deck. A man with a feared beard appears. You attacked us, he yells. No, you attacked us, mumbles Raphael. We want to talk. We're willing to trade for the totem that you got at the Zokmir hunting camp, you say. I don't have any totems, says the man gruffly. We know you have it, yells Mac. 
We can A, offer to work with him to collect more totems, or B, threaten the man. I would straight up threaten this guy, but I've noticed that it says the keyword, the, the word there is totems. So I wonder if he has more than one. Maybe if we work with him, we can collect more of them. I would straight up threaten him if it was not an S at the end of that totem word right there. But we're going to go to 27.3. We're collecting totems as well, you say. Maybe we can work together to go get home. No chance, says the man, tugging on his beard. You attacked us. We don't trust you. We can board the ship, take their totem strength seven. <laughs> end of, and, and that's it. Or we can go ahead and do something different. Like we could offer to pay them for the totems nine coins and artifact, which we do have. But that's nine coins and artifact. <laughs> Or, of course, leave them. Eh, not happening. We're going to go ahead and board the ship and take the totem. Roar! Let's go ahead and drop some of this on here. We're going to go... Well, again, it's only one ship damage and three health. That's not too bad. Instead of taking a whole bunch of fatigue for strength actions. Yeah. I think we're just going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and fail this again. And I'm going to take one ship damage and three health. So let's go ahead and see what we get. We got a, Oh, we got a six. We're not going to fail. This is going to be amazing. Because remember, I've got like Freddy the Mule here. Look at that. Plus two. We're going to go ahead and use that. I'm going to grab a command and put that right on him. And that means we actually did pass the test. We go to 211. You surround their crew and search their ship. You find the totem in the captain's cabin along with a few other useful trinkets. We'll kill you for this, screams the man as you throw their weapons into the sea and return to the manticore. Couldn't that have gone another way, Kasumi urges? They deserved what they got, says Raphael. We, oh, we gained one low morale token. Well, I guess we didn't do a good thing. And we also get two coins, two experience points, and we get Adventure Card 74, which is the Totem of Time. Awesome. Of course, we do complete Quest 146. We're going to go ahead, put our two coins up here, and I'm actually just going to go put this on the captain to get rid of our low morale token. I'm not even going to put it on our guys. And we get this totem. It says, do not draw an event card this turn. So we get to prolong the game if we want to. So this would be really good if we're getting near the end and we're so close to a totem. But I don't think just using it over and over is going to really help us too much, especially since I don't have any command. That's the end of our two actions. We're going to go ahead and move into our ship action. I'm going to go up to the bridge, go ahead and remove all the command from all of these places. Look at all this command we have all over the board everywhere. We're going to gain three, put it right there, and then we're going to go ahead and gain a card. Let's see what card we get. We have got what says defensive stance during an end of round enemy attack. Nope, not going to need that card. Let's see what happens to us here. And I'm not going to use that totem. Like I said, I don't think I'm ever going to use that totem unless I'm really close to the end and I need to get one more totem. Let's see what it says here. Merchant Raid. A pirate caravel descends upon a fat Lucran merchant. Help the merchants escape. Cunning six. If I fail, two ship damage, gain one coin. All right. So I'm going to get two ship damage. If I fail this, not the end of the world. I don't have anything that's really going to help with cunning, I don't think. We're gonna, well, that's definitely not going to help. That's fine. We're going to take two ship damage. Let's see where we got hit. In one and five. Let's go ahead and place a couple markers in one hull. And five, which is going to be, is that the sick bay? Nope, it's the quarters. Okay, not the end of the world. But I do get one coin even if I fail. So let's go ahead and put that right here. We have so much money, it's unbelievable. We probably need to go to a port and do something. Actually, I think what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna use two of these and a carrot to go ahead and eat. I'm gonna place that command right here onto this so that I can get rid of four fatigue because we have a lot of it out here. One, two, three, and four. We're going to remove it from four of our people. Mac and Marco still have fatigue on them. I also get to heal five damage. I'm going to go ahead and heal the five off Laurent because he's actually flat out dead. So we're going to get that off him. And that's going to be the end of our cooking. I think that's going to be the end of our cooking. Yep. Yeah. And we're going to go into our two ship actions. Or I keep saying ship actions. I mean our two normal actions. At this point, I don't really have anything I'm doing right now. We're going to go ahead and go north. Why not? I'm going to check these places out up there. I think, again, we're going to go ahead. No, I'm not going to use it. I only have two command. I'm just going to drive up there, and then we'll just do this a little bit slowly. One, totally fine. Moving right up there. Which one do we check out first? I think we're going to check out 91. If we have keyword axe, turn to 91.1. I do not. We're going to go ahead and see what it says. It says, you climb a shale ledge. Following Gilligan's chart, you find field of thick gray tree stumps. Okay, Gilly, Gilligan, I don't, I haven't seen this chart. I have no idea how we got this chart. It says, I can A, search the tree stumps, perception eight, or I can leave. Let's go ahead and search the tree stumps. What's the worst that can happen? Perception. All right, I've got some perception out there. Let's check it out. I'm not gonna do anything. We're just gonna draw a card and hope for a big number. We got a four. I have a total of four, five, six, seven. Not enough. Eh. 
Too bad. Two health. Not the end of the world. I'm going to go ahead and put those two health out on the board. Let's give them to... I'm going to give one to Raphael. I'm going to give them both to Marco. Marco gets to health. Totally fine. We're going to turn to 100. Oh, I gained a low morale token. No, I don't. I'm going to go ahead and place this right on our captain to get rid of that low morale token. And then we're going to turn to 100. 100 says a silver axe is buried in one of the tree stumps along with an old wooden chest filled with coins. So we're going to gain three coins, one experience point, and adventure card 72. I also gain quests 166. I bet that quest is going to be axe because we come back, this axe won't be there. We're going to gain three coins. I'm just going to drop a five and get rid of these two. Then I also get an axe. This is out of control. I found Paul Bunyan's axe. So Gillian's map chart or whatever brought us this axe. Too bad we didn't find Marianne or the Skipper. We're going to go ahead and slot this under Kasumi. She's going to go ahead and take that. She has some of those three damage with plus two accuracy right now. But I think with the three act, No, actually, I'm going to give it to the captain. That way if the captain needs to hit for three, we're totally fine. Because right now she only has that plus one accuracy with that gun, which is too bad. I also go ahead and gain quests. 66 and like we thought it is axe we found a powerful silver axe so this i don't need this is it just tells me if i go to that island something there's nothing there all right we're going to move on to our next action and by action i mean ship action this time we're going to go down to the quarters so we moved and then we went and checked out number one we're going to move down to the quarters we're going to go ahead and take the one off of her the captain and the one off the food we're going to go ahead and gain three command i get a card let's see what card i get we got defend discard this to equip card to give another crew member two defense. Oh, but it's a four and our deck is getting kind of low. I think we're going to go ahead and discard that card. I've noticed that when you get to about the third round of this game, those cards slotting under the characters become a little bit less and less important because you have so many more adventure cards now that you're using more than you're using those cards themselves. Except, of course, the repair card, which I should probably be using because our ship is starting to take a lot of damage. All right, we're going to move into our next card here and see what happens. We have found the Dungalotius, a sea creature with massive jaw eyes, the ship. Oh boy, scare off with the aggressive maneuver, Savvy Six, or go ahead and attack him. Let's go ahead and just scare him away. I've got a lot, oh, I got a lot of strength too. Let's go ahead and try to kill him. I can get a meat back. Why not? Meat's kind of good. I'm going to go ahead and pass out some fatigue. I'm going to go ahead and give this fatigue to Kanan. Kanan gets plus two. We're going to draw our card and see how it goes. Come on, Kanan. I got five, six, seven. That's enough. Okay, perfect. I was all planning to use our guys that give us strength, but I don't need to. We're going to go ahead and get rid of this, and we have gained another meat, which means I think it's time to do some more eating. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of a carrot and two food. Actually, I'm going to get rid of a grain and two meat, and we're going to go ahead and use this card again to get rid of four fatigue, because I've got some out there. One, two, three. Actually, I only have three fatigue out there, but that's okay. I'll get rid of it. I should have actually used one more person for that skill check. Then I get to get rid of five damage again. I think we're going to get rid of the four that are on Audrey. We're going to get rid of those four and the one off Kasumi. There we go. They're doing just fine now. We still have four on Gregory, four on Mac, and five on Raphael. Oh, Marco also has two damage as well. That's the end of our actions. We're going to move into our two actions now. I said, should, I can't have been missing this every time. We have finished our cards, done our two ship actions. Let's go do our two actions. There, that's what I should be saying. I'm going to check out area 31 as my first action. 31. If keyword submarine, we don't have it. Sounds pretty cool. Hope I find it. There, the spires stand like sentries painting a the choppy waves with deep looming shadows. It's a difficult task for the manticore, but by patiently navigating through the spires, you're able to salvage the remains of a derelict ship. So I'm going to take one ship damage, but I'm going to gain one coin and one material and return to the ship. So I'm going to write submarine down on our little quest log. We're going to gain our supplies there, and I'm going to go ahead and see where we took a ship damage in number one, which is the hull, which we've already taken a ship damage there, so we can place this wherever we want. I'm going to place it right down here in the sick bay, totally fine. That's our first action. Our second action is we're going to go ahead and move, so I'm going to use that coal again to move three spaces, and we're going to head up north. Maybe we can find it up there. We're going to go to page number 13. Let's see what we can see here. 13 is right here. I'm going to come in right here into the City of Ashes. I think that might be a good thing. Oh, look at this city over here. I think we're totally going to go over there. But we're going to go ahead. So let's, I can move three. One, two, three, I think. Or I can go one, two, three. I want to get over that big city. One, two. I bet the submarine's over there. <laughs> Not that I would never know. I actually probably isn't. One, I don't even know where, oh, I could start over here actually. One, two, three, almost made it. Oh, barf. I could start here. One, 
and then two. Oh, I don't even know how that divides. Oh, three, I guess. I go to either side. Oh, that's a little confusing. I'm gonna go one, two, three, right over here. Totally fine. We're gonna go ahead and move here. That way, I'm gonna get to this city over here. And look, a port and some. I can go to merchants. We got lots of stuff we can do over here. So let's go ahead. I have to do two of these tests here to see how much damage my hull takes. The first one we have to take is right here. We got a six. We're totally fine. Now we gotta do a six. Let's see how that goes. We got a two. That's terrible. I'd rather have failed the first one. We're gonna take two ship damage, which doesn't mean we're not dead yet. I'm gonna take six and a five. So we're gonna place those damages on our ship. Six and a five means our quarters is no good. And the bridge has taken one damage. And I'm actually gonna to go to the bridge because I wanna remove the command and gain three. Now we only had one command, or we had two command actually out there. So I'm gonna remove the two command, but gain three. I really enjoy getting command. It's, uh, it's kind of sad because it almost feels like it's not worth going to these other places because the command is so important in this game, especially near the end because all I'm doing is placing these down on all of our different command cards and everything to do things. That's the end here. Oh, I get to draw a card. Let's see what we get. We got console when you cook a recipe remove one madness or one frightened from a crew member eh, not going to keep that all right let's see what our card says here our card says broken boiler oh yuck the blasted boiler is acting up again repair it craft seven totally going to repair this i'm not going to take two health and gain one weakened that's a terrible plan weakened is horrible let's go ahead and see how well we do Oh, yuck. All right, we're going to use Kasumi. Kasumi's going to go ahead and let us redraw ones because that was bonkers. Let's see what we got. We got a six. Okay, a six. So I need a seven. Not the end of the world. I've got things that can help us with that. I've got this right here. We're going to go ahead and use it. That's going to give us a ton. So we have actually repaired this. We don't take a weakened token because that's barfy. And we're going to go on to our two actions now. Our first action is to move up here. We're gonna go up there as our first action. I gotta draw a card and move actually, but that's okay, we got a five. And we're gonna, we're gonna go to the port. I'm gonna to go to port first, that's gonna be our second action. At the port, I start by gaining one grain. Then I can choose to go to the inn. I'm not gonna to go to the inn because nobody has any fatigue, that's awesome. We're then gonna go ahead and repair our ship. You bet we're gonna repair our ship. Our ship has two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven damage on it, but that's okay, I've got five of these materials. One, two, three, four, five. So I only have to pay two gold. So we're gonna turn this piece of gold into a three piece of gold and put it back out onto our sh area there. That's our ship. Our ship is totally repaired. Now I can go to the healer. I'm gonna go ahead and pay one, two, three, and four. We're gonna get rid of all of this health. There we go. We're gonna pay to cure absolutely everybody. That's what I need to do. So we need to pay four. So again, I'm gonna break down one of my fives into a single coin, and we're gonna go ahead and move on down. We've done that. Now I could go ahead and pay two artifacts. I don't have two artifacts, but I can buy level up cards. You bet I can. I have nine experience points. I'm gonna go ahead and spend eight to get these two cards. So this one is gonna go underneath Audrey here. So now she has a little bit more perception, though I'm still probably gonna use her primarily for this craft action because she's awesome and he's going to go ahead and gain a strength card the only reason i'm giving him the strength is because he already has strength as one of his starting attributes up here his other two cards he can get really don't help with anything that he has already he can get perception or he can also get cunning and he doesn't actually have that as a innate trait so we'd only be getting plus one if we use it but plus one is of course better than nothing especially when i don't have a lot of cunning out on the board but those are the two i've chosen we still have one experience point and that's our first action actually i think our second action we moved and then we went to the port. I'm going to move down to the quarters and remove the one off Kasumi and the one off of our satchel and go ahead and gain three command, which is perfect. We're going to draw a card. Let's see what card we got. We got Jack of all trade. I like that card. We're going to keep that card though. It takes two to slot, but that's okay. We're going to get rid of, oh no, what do I get rid of? I think we're going to get rid of focus mind. I'm just going to go ahead and put that as a two. So I traded a three for a two. That's not a good plan, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead now and see what happens to us. We have found a coral nest, a delicate nest of glittering serpent eggs rests below the waves. Cunning six to get two meat. If I fail, I take two ship damage. I'm not worried about the, again, the two ship damage is not the end of the world. I'm mean, Cause I've got, I can spend a command to repair it if I want. Let's go ahead and see what we get. Two, I got totally banged up. We're gonna go ahead and draw two cards. We got these two, we got hit in the two and three. That's not the end of the world. We're gonna go ahead and put one on two and one on three. I don't even use those places, but I still get two meat. So let's go ahead and put that down over here again. When I was worried about food, now again, I'm not worried about food. Our first action we're gonna do is I think we're gonna do a market action because look at all this gold I have. 
I took the top seven cards from our market deck. Let's go ahead and see what we got. We got a leather coat for one, if we wish to buy that. We found a Lucan boiler. I can use one to travel one. Well, I'm not gonna, whoa, what's this? Like biscuits and gravy, two grain and two food. You get rid of four, six, and one. That other food I have is better. We can get rid of four food of any kind to get rid of four fatigue and five health. Again, our one is better. I can get rid of three and two. Again, it's better. Oh, here we go. Zokmir Jerkin. That might be kind of good. Oh, check this out. A revolver. <gasps> Four damage and two. Oh, and I've got the box for this. We're totally picking this up. Okay, we're, I think we found our two things we're buying here. I'm going to buy these two things for 16. I've got 5, 10, 15, 16. That's right here. 16 bucks. Totally going to do that because this Jerkin and this pistol is amazing. Now, who do I give the pistol to? Because everybody's got a lot of really cool things on them. Oh, it's so hard to oh, place, may place pistol damage. Now, is this, oh, it's a revolver, so it's not a pistol. I was going to say, I could maybe give this to him and he could place it. No, he can't. We're going to give this to, oh, man, who do I get? Mac? Maybe give it to Mac? That would be a bad idea. Or maybe I give it to Kasumi? I don't know what to give it to. There's so many good things. All right, we're going to go and put this in with the rest of our gear. These I'm not going to buy. There's nothing good in here. We're going to put these on the bottom of our deck, and we're going to go figure out who gets this. I've made my decision. Raphael is going to go ahead and grab the revolver. And then I'm actually going to pass this Mythian axe. I think we're going to give this to Mac. So therefore, if Mac needs to hit real hard, she can use the axe. Otherwise, if she wants to use her saber, she totally can with the plus one defense. With our second action, I'm actually going to go to number 41. And then I'm, for the beginning of our next turn, I think we're going to go over here. If keyword cook turned to 41.7, well, that's happening. A small Lucran trade village sits in the shadow of a massive tower wrapped in clouds. The Hive Tower, re a reminder of the ancient power of the gods. You wander the market streets, pers pursuing nate shops and white stone archways, perusing, sorry. Draw eight merchant cards. You may purchase one at negative one cost. If you do not purchase a card, gain one grain, return to the ship. Oh, well, that's kind of funny. I get a double market action. Here are our eight merchants cards. Let's go ahead and check them out. I've got a Eel Scale Armor, it's going to give me negative three defense. We've got a Zokmar Harpoon, it does three damage, we, and it's two accuracy. What is this? Eye of Wisdom. <gasps> this gets rid of madness. That might be really good. All right, we got the Alzarian Trident. We've got Moon Spice Tea. You can remove well, any status. That's pretty good. Cook one recipe for one fewer food token, and do not pay the command cost. Oh, wow, that's really good. Now, Zarian Cookbook. The bow, which does four damage, is a four accuracy. We've got Vegetable Pie, which gets rid of five and six, which is finally better than what we have, and it's only two bucks. I might pick that up, or else the scales. I don't know. I'm really thinking this thing. This is what I want. I want this Eye of Wisdom. So we're going to pay a negative one cost of that, so I'm going to go ahead and pay three for this. We're going to put that with the rest of our stuff. That way, if we ever get Madness again, I, otherwise, the only way to get rid of it is to, do, to go ahead and pay food. This way, I can use a command instead. Plus, not to mention two more plus two savvy. That's not bad. Moving back over here, I've got so much command, I don't even know what to do. And I also don't have any out on the board when anybody, because nobody's hurt, nobody's got any status effects. There's really not a lot going on here. Um, I think we're going to go to the... I want to go here, but now again, I don't know what these are. So I can start taking ship damage, which would be pretty bad, or even health. I like command. Why don't we just go to the sick bay? just for fun. I'm going to gain three command, and that's going to be about all we get, just to go somewhere different for a change. Now, we have a ton of command. That's pretty awesome. I'm excited to hopefully get back out in the world and do some awesome things with all this command. I do still get to draw a card over here in the sick bay. Let's see what we get. We got treat. Wow, that's really good. I'm going to put that under him right now. I'm going to pay two to put that under there. So now I only have to pay one to get rid of Venom or Weakened, which is really good. So now if we do get those status effects, I don't have to, or if I'm offered the ability to fail an action and I take that status effect, it's not going to be that detrimental because he's pretty good at that. All right, we're going to go into our next card here. Oh, we're into our harder cards. Let's see what we find. We found Hail. Fist-sized Hail strikes the deck. Avoid the Hail Perception 7. Oh, okay, we're going to have to do this because that's pretty rough. All right, Perception 7. We've got some Perception out there. Let's go ahead and use it. I'm going to use, how about Laurent? Laurent has, no, yep, yeah, I'm going to use Laurent. Laurent has two Perception. We're going to gain that. Let's go ahead and draw our card and see how we do. Come on, 
Oh, five, that's perfect, that's a seven, that's exactly what I needed. I was all set to start using Lucrin goggles and everything, but we don't have to worry about that. Nothing happens to us, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that and move into our actions. Like I said before, we're gonna go ahead and check out 70, and I'm even check out 87, because look, again, it goes off here, we don't know what's there. Who knows, this could be another one of those things that gets us onto a new page. Lucrin City and the Hive Tower. Clouds gather around an immense white tower. It's bigger than any skyscraper in Manhattan and stunning to behold. The stone shines in the sun, reflecting a blinding light down on the city as you tie the manticore to an ornate metal pier. So we have multiple options here. One is we can explore the Merchant District. We can visit the Lucra University. We can enter the main gate of the Hive Tower. It requires the keyword Hive, which we don't have. We can return the Prince to the palace. Again, requires prints and unavailable if you have banners. So none of this is really happening. And if that wasn't enough, we can find the antique collector, which requires rich. So we have a lot of things we could we could do here if we had some keywords. Let's go ahead and start by visiting the, let's go to the university first. The Great Lucran University, a dome of intricate iron beams and sheets of crystal glass, sits upon a platform of white stone. As you enter, a professor leaps from his notebooks. I heard rumors, but it wasn't sure until you walked in. More people from New York! This is very exciting. I wish I could spend more time chatting with you, but I must ask you a favor. Our science ship has gone missing, and a very near to the city. We would ask the king, but lately, that relationship has soured somewhat. Will you please investigate for me? We're going to gain quest 134. If keyword pyramid, turn to 70.13 or just otherwise turn to 70. So here is our quest. University ship missing. The professor at Lucra University asked us to investigate the missing science ship. The ship was last seen in the southwest of Lucra City. You enter a shop filled with strange machines and contraptions. The store manager greets you. A bearded Lucran wearing thick goggles and a tool belt brimming with wrenches, hammers, and other instruments. I have a feeling about you, he says with a grin. I've got just the thing you could use. He guides you to a metallic diving suit with tiny glass faceplate. I'll give you a great deal if you buy it right now. We can buy the diving suit for five coins, which is a super, super no-brainer, or decline, which is a super, super not-brainer if we decline this. When Colin and I played this originally, there were a few things that happened to us that actually we needed the diving suit for, and we had no idea where to get this. So now that I know where to get the diving suit, this is awesome. So we are totally going to pay our five coins to get that diving suit. That's going to be awesome. So we're going to go ahead and pay the five coins, and we're going to put our diving suit token over with the rest of our stuff. Here it is. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. I really wanted this last game we played and we didn't know where to get it and now we do ha colin i know where to get the diving suit oh you can hardly wait till he sees my playthrough to find out where to get it at this point we're going to go to 87 there's a chance that either a this could be that vessel we're looking for or b maybe it's a way to get over onto this map over here if there even is a map over there oh, okay it's just the science one but still better than nothing we're going to go to 87.3 87.3 states, you sail near a rocky shore where the Professor Lucra University said the science ship was last seen. As you pass a stone pillar, a natural tower guarding the cove beyond, you spy the Lucran ship. It is stuck between two rocks. The crew waves and shouts when they catch sight of the manticore. As you approach, a flash of quick shadows off on the distant cliff face catches your eye. Winged monsters dive from above, ready to snatch easy prey from the deck of the science ship. We can either save the crew, which sounds like a really good idea, or we can escape. Eh, it doesn't sound like a really good idea. Let's save the crew! We have our three cards. I'm going to give them a quick truffle shuffle here and throw them out onto the board. Oh, they're all winged creatures, I bet. They've all got flying, just like it said in the book. All right, so basically we have to hit them with ranged attacks or at least knock out their wings so that we can actually do some real damage to them. All right, we've got our four action cubes, and I'm going to gain two extra command because of our captain. Now, of course, I have a bonkers amount of command, so if we can't take all these guys out with all the command we have, this is out of control. All right, we're going to go ahead and start shooting these. Now, they only have five defense, which isn't too hard to hit, and we've got some pretty good ranged weapons. So I think we're going to start with, <laughs> you got it, that pistol. Mark Raphael's coming down with that revolver. This thing is bonkers good. So we're going to go ahead and see how he does. He gets plus two to this. So he needs a four or better. Let's see how he does. 
Oh, I only got a two. That's okay. I've got that card that allows me to get plus two accuracy right here. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. So I've got a four. I was able to do four damage. And I could do one, two, three, four, five, six. I could take this guy completely out if I use my horn. And we're going to do that. We're going to go ahead and take, unless we want to do something different here. Actually, I think I've got a better plan. Let's see if we can figure this out. We were able to hit, but we've got six damage we could push onto this thing. So I could do two and spill one over here, getting rid of his wings as well. So I could go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five, six. I put six would take this guy out. I think it's best to just take people out, right? Or we could do one, two, three, four, five, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then somebody else could do the two over here, killing off this guy which wouldn't be bad. Then he would only hit Raphael for three, but he gets to block two, so he only take one. That would be okay. Or I could, oh man, there's so many different things we could do here. I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give Raphael this. He's gonna go ahead and shoot this guy, because he's still got the same defense. So he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna go like that. That's gonna be our plan. It's gonna six like that and he's gonna go ahead and take three damage, but he blocks two, so he's actually only gonna take one, which is totally fine. So Raphael has gone ahead and hit, and he gets to send his token somewhere, which his token is actually two defense, which is really good. So if something really hits us hard, it's not the end of the world. So I'm gonna give this two defense. I think we're gonna give it to the captain maybe, because she can do four damage as well with her hunting rifle. I think she's gonna do that. We're gonna go ahead and bring our captain down and see how she does. Now she only gets plus one with this, which is not the greatest. I don't have anything else that's gonna help with that. It's okay, we'll be fine. We're gonna go ahead and flip our card and see how it goes. We got four plus one is five. Yes, go Captain Odessa. All right, Captain Odessa has done four damage as well. So we're gonna go ahead and place that four damage. I think at this point, she's gonna get hit for a little bit and that's okay. She's gonna go one, two, three, four and take out the wings on this guy so I can maybe start hitting with an ax, which would be really good. And we're gonna go ahead and give her a cube. Now she's gonna hit for three, she's able to block one. So she is gonna take two damage, not the end of the world. We're gonna put that here. Oh, wait a minute, what am I doing? I can block that with his token. That's why you get the token. And I can pass this to somebody. I'm gonna go ahead and pass this to Mac. Mac, I think, is gonna take this guy out with just two damage, which is fine. But we're gonna go ahead and do another big shot here first. I think that's gonna be awesome. So we're gonna put Odessa back, which is just great. And we're gonna bring back that revolver again. Here comes Raphael. Now you can use a character twice, but only twice. Raphael's coming back in with a super awesome revolver. And we're gonna go ahead and draw our card and see if we're able to hit. I gotta figure out who I'm gonna hit first. I think we're gonna hit, he can do four. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna do five there. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could do six here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That'd be awesome. I think we're gonna do that. We're gonna hit this guy and we're gonna take him out. Here we go, ready? We got a five, okay, that's perfect. Okay, we're, oh, no, maybe we're not gonna take him out. I think I got a better plan. We're gonna do our four damage here. I can do one, two, three, four. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do four damage like this. I'm gonna do one, two, three, right here and four, I'm gonna hit here. Because I can spill damage over as long as I've done more damage on the other character. Which, the reason I'm doing that is because then I'm not gonna take any status effects or anything. Now he is gonna hit for four, he can only block two, so he is gonna take two more damage, which isn't the end of the world. And I think he's able to pass his token. Yes, he is. He can pass his token. He's gonna pass his token to, I think we're gonna pass the token to the captain. No, we're gonna give it to Audrey. Audrey's gonna take the token, that's gonna be awesome. That's the end of him. He's gonna go, oh, this card gets discarded. He's gonna go ahead and take his revolver back. I've got one more person to come down. It's gonna be Mac. Mac is gonna come down. She's got plus four. Come on, she can't miss. It's impossible. She's got a two, that's awesome. She's able to do two damage and she's gonna use the captain's token to do it diagonally. So she's gonna go ahead and take out this Mantadon. If that's, that's good enough, we're gonna kill the Mantadon off. He's done. We have just these two left. She's gonna grab the last token, and that's the end of our things that we can do. So now these guys are gonna be able to attack. This one's gonna attack for four damage, and I can go ahead and use my studded leather vest to reduce the damage by two. So I'm only gonna take two, and we're gonna give that to Kasumi. Kasumi's gonna go ahead and take two damage. This one's gonna hit us for three. We're gonna go ahead and take the three damage, or maybe I should use this. I could go ahead and use this, to soak up two of the damage. So I'm only gonna take one. And again, we're gonna give that to Kasumi. 
because he's going to take the one damage. Totally fine. We're going to go into our next attack round, which is probably going to see the end of these flying villains here. We're going to go ahead and put our cubes back up there. Let's see here. I need to do one, two, three, four damage here. Not a big deal. I can do four damage. It's going to be pretty fun. I'm going to use Audrey. Audrey's going to go ahead and attack. She gets plus two, so she does need to pull a three or better in order to actually hit. Come on, let's go. Audrey. She did. She got a four. And he doesn't have flying anymore, so I can do one, two, three, four. This guy is done. We're going to move him off the board. She's going to take one of the cubes, and that's the end of her turn. Now I have to do one, two, three, four, five left in order to totally take this guy out. And I think we can do that. We're going to... Hmm, how are we going to do this? I think we're going to hit with somebody that can actually hit really easily is going to be the plan. I think we're going to bring Mac down. Mac does have her just Saber here, and she's going to go ahead and use that. She's going to draw a card. She needs a one. She totally hit. She only does two damage, and that's totally fine. We're going to go ahead and use the two damage on right here. We're going to do that. Or maybe I should just put one, two. This is what we're going to do. We're going to one, two like that. She's going to take three. She does have her Saber card which gives her an extra one defense when she atta gets attacked. So she's only going to take two health, which is just great. She's going to take the two health, put it right here, and that's the end of her turn. We're going to bring somebody else in next. I'm going to go ahead and put a cube on her. I think this time we're going to finish this person off and do three damage. So whoever has the most accuracy and can do three damage is attacking next. That's going to be Laurent. Laurent's coming in with his twin daggers. He's going to go ahead and use these. Oh, I should have passed this token. I'm going to pass this token to Laurent since he's the one that's actually attacking. So he pretty much can't miss. Of course, my deck is empty, so we're going to go ahead and give it a quick little truffle shuffle here. Truffle shuffle this back up. Truffly shuffly. There we go. Put it just like that. Put it off the side. Draw our card. See how we do? We got five. All right. And we were able to hit this guy, do one, two, three damage with our twin daggers. Totally done. We have succeeded in our battle, and we get to gain the spoils. After chasing away the predators, you help the science vessel dislodge from the rocks. Our deepest thanks, says the captain, a man in long professor's coat and Lucran-style hat. We were here to study the mantidons in the area, but came ill-prepared. We've grown more aggressive lately. Not sure why. No matter. We are safe now. The professor gives you a large metal eyeball. We would have died without your help. And now that we've seen our crew at work, I believe you might be able to make more use of this than we can. What is it, you asked? This is the key to the Hive Tower, he says. Technically, I don't have the authority to give it to you. We convinced the king to allow us access, but all our expeditions into the tower have ended in disaster. The place is unspeakably dangerous. I've told the king that the road to scientific discovery is unpaved and treacherous, but he expects results, and I believe his patience is thinning. Don't expect a warm welcome from the guards when you arrive, but there's so much to learn. Please help us con to continue our study. So we're going to gain six coins, three experience points. We complete quest 134 and we gain quest 135. We're going to gain our six coins, and we're also going to get our new quest, Explore the Hive Tower. A professor from Lucran University gave us a key to enter the Hive Tower, though he warns us that it is quite dangerous. I am not scared. Uh, what I am scared of is that card. We're going to go ahead and move up to the bridge because we placed a lot of that command out on our board, and we're going to get rid of it all. And then we're going to go ahead and gain three back. So we got three command. A big, huge line of it right here. I get to draw a card. We have... A careful aim. Take one extra damage when hit by an enemy counter. Eh, I don't like taking damage. That's the end of that. We're going to move into our next card and see how it goes. We're going to see, hopefully, something. What's this? A Kyrian attack. A huge Kyraven swoops down upon the ship. Fight it off. Strength eight. Three health and three ship damage. Or outrun it. Craft nine. Four ship damage. You must move the ship one distance. I don't want to move the ship. So we're going to go ahead and fight this thing off with a strength of eight. If I don't do this, I take three ship damage and three health. Huh. You know, that's not going to be too bad because we're not actually going to be doing anything right now. So let's go ahead and take the damage. I'm okay with that. We got three. Yeah, we're totally taking the damage. I thought if I got a high enough number, I could use some of our cards. Three, four, five, six, seven is still not going to be enough to get to eight. So we're going to take three ship damage. Let's see where that is. Three ship damage is actually pretty bad. We got one, three, and four. So we're going to go ahead and place our cubes on one, three, and four. So we can't use a sick bay anymore, but that's okay. And I also take three health damage. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to give all three 
to Raphael. Raphael's gonna take all three of it, because I've got a plan. My, I got a plan, it's kind of a sad plan, but it's a plan nonetheless. The plan involves me going to port, which isn't ideal, but I think we're gonna do it. I'm gonna gain my one grain, then we're gonna go ahead, we're not going to the inn, but we are gonna repair our ship because our ship did get pretty banged up. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all the damage from our ship, which is one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna go ahead and pay our five coinage right here to get rid of that. Then we're gonna go ahead and go to the medic. We're gonna go ahead and take off one, two, three. We're going to pay three bucks to get rid of all of this health damage on our guys, just because they said this is a pretty dangerous place. So I'm going to go ahead, pay three, getting rid of that five, and putting two back down our board. That leaves us with only four gold and one artifact. Totally fine with that. I could also buy a level up card if I really wanted to. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. We have, I only have four, so the only two I could buy would be this one and this one. Now he's already got two skills, so he can't buy anything. So let's go ahead and just slot this here. We're gonna pay our four experience points to go ahead and gain protected. Why not? I don't know if I'm ever gonna use it, but I, it gives me an extra perception if I need him to use perception. At this point, I think we're done with our port and we're gonna move into our two actions. And we're gonna go right to that Lucran city and see if we can get into that tower. I do have the Hive keyword, so I've passed right by our 70 card, which is the Lucran City. It says we have Hive, we go to 70.2. It says a dozen guards in white robes stand at the door, but you stride up to them as though you've done this a hundred times. Raising the metal key in plain sight, the guard glances at you sideways, but they let you pass. You place the eyeball into the keyhole and the doors scrape open. Tunnels wander in and out of the entryway, but every time you start down one of them, you end up right where you started. There's nowhere to go. You gather the crew. We can't keep doing this much longer, or those guards will suspect something. Kanan reaches out for the metal eye, examining the inscription. He turns to Mick. It looks like there's a mechanism on this sphere. It's not just a key. It's a machine. Can you read the symbols? Leak or lazy? She says, pointing to the first. Ambitions reigns, I think. She examining the second. And this one, I can't make it out, but it's half rubbed away. It looks like it's been worn down by overuse. Trigger the mechanism that says leak or lazy. Trigger the mechanism that says ambition reigns or trigger the worn mechanism. I think we're going with the worn mechanism, though it's probably the wrong one. But who knows? Let's find out. Or, of course, I could break the puzzle. I don't think we're going to break anything. We're going to check out 74. Kanan tries the worn mechanism. It's like a stripped screw. It only turns halfway and nothing happens. I'm going to gain two low morale tokens. Mm, no, I'm not. I'm not going to attain two low morale tokens. I'm going to use this. I'm going to put two command on this card. And we're going to get rid of those two low morale tokens. Eh, not going to happen. We have to go back to 70.15. Was that where we came from? No, that's not where he came from. It says the guards are mumbling to themselves from outside the door. And you know, we're running out of time before they come to inquire about the credentials. Oh boy, um, we're gonna go, oh no, no, we're running out of time. Let's do, oh man, which one do we do? I'm gonna do the ambition reigns. Let's try that, 75. Kanan twists the mechanism and out of the eyeball grows a mass of metal scales that starts crawling up his arm. The crew try to stop it, but it grows across every hand that touches it. They try to pull away or fling the eye to the floor, but nothing can stop the progress of this mystifying metal machine until Mac takes a handkerchief from her sleeve and starts to polish away the scales from the arms of the crew. She works her way down each arm until all that is left is the key. Then she polishes that too and releases, and it releases a shining metal coin. You all right? She asks with those who reach for the metal eye, cradle their raw hand. It seems I m you must have a level of humanity to approach the mechanism correctly. We should have turned the words around. Not ambition reigns, but reign your ambitions. <laughs> Thanks, Mac. That's awesome. So good if helpful. All right, we're going to take our four health. That's fantastic. And oh, I get a coin. Yay! One coin for four damage. That's a, not a very good price to pay. All right, we're going to go ahead and get our coin, and we're going to take our four damage. I'm going to pile that right onto Marco. Marco can take four damage. That's great. And I'm going to gain a weakness token, but I'm actually going to go ahead and use my ability here from Gregory to treat the weakness by paying one command, so I'm not even going to gain the weakness. And we're going to go to 17.5. Okay, so we're going back to the same place this time. 
We're again back here. We can do the Warren mechanism. Ambition rain, which is rain your ambitions. Thanks. Leak or lazy? Okay, I'm done with this thing. We're going to break the puzzle because I pick terribly every time, so let's just break this thing and be done with it. You walk up to Kanan, grab the metal eye, and smash it to the floor, slamming your boot down on it and twisting it into the stone. The floor shudders and dust puffs in from every tunnel in every direction. You search down a corridor and find that it no longer loops back to the entry room. They must have been the answer the whole time, you say. Oh, that's awesome. What a frustrating machine, says Kanan. Before the guards have a chance to suspect anything else, you head down one of the corridors, 80.1. The air is cool but thick, like you're underwater, and the light shimmers like it's refracting off the currents of an intangible sea. But the calm is broken by the thrum of approaching footsteps and the scratch, clang, scratch, clang of a sword dragged across stone. Combat 16, 17, 37, oh, level 15. We're going to go ahead, take our three cards, and shuffle them up a little bit and see what we get. We're going to drop them down like this. We've got a what? Knight Louvric Infested Eye and a Skeletal Hunter. I think we've seen this guy before. This guy's not too bad. This guy flies. And this guy, this guy, look at this. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He has ten damage, but actually I think we can probably get rid of a lot of that damage. There's our cubes. This is the command we have. I get to add two more because of our captain's ability card. Let's go ahead and see what we can do. One, two, three, four. I think that's a good start. I only need a six, which isn't too bad. Hmm. How are we going to do this? I think we're going to start with, I think we're going to start with, oh no, I don't know who to start with. I think we're going to start with, uh, hmm, let's see, if we can do three damage over here and pass a token, that would be the way to go. I think we're going to do that. I only need a four to hit that thing, or a three over here. Oh, Kanan could do that in one shot. Check this out. He's got his pistols that, of course, can go diagonal across this thing, and it's a shot with his pistol is three damage. One, oh, it's not going to do all the damage I need. I need to do one more damage. Oh, everybody needs to do one more damage. This is terrible. I could use my horn, which would take this guy out. One, two, three... Yeah, actually, it's not a bad idea. We're going to do that. We're going to go ahead and fire with Kanan. Kanan's going to go ahead and take a card. He got a 4 plus 3 is 7, so he was able to hit this infested eye. He's going to do 1, 2, 3, 4. That kills this thing. I'm going to, because I'm going to go ahead and give one command to this. That's perfect. That'll give me another 2 damage. So he did 1, 2, 3, 4, and I can splash one over to that guy, which is perfect. And he does not retaliate on splash damage. That kills our infested eye. Let's get him out of here. Push those guys together a little bit. And now he's done. He's going to take one of his tokens and move off the board. I get to pass this. We're going to pass this over to Audrey. Audrey's going to go ahead and take that token. Next, we're going to see if we can take this guy out in one shot as well. I think that's going to be our next plan. We're going to attack with, I think we're going to attack with a pistol. We've got Raphael here. He's got his pistol. He only needs a three plus. Let's see how we go. We got a five. Perfect. He did four. One, two, three, four. Done. This guy's gone. We're going to go ahead and put him over there. This is the only thing we have left. What's his name? Raphael is going to take that token. Now, did he get to add his token? Yes, he does. He covered up this space with damage. So he gets to pass his token as well. So we're going to go ahead and give this to Audrey as well. Audrey's coming in. She's got her awesome hammer of justice here, her titan hammer, go Thor. She's going to go ahead. She needs a four or better in order to hit this. Okay, let's see how we do. We got, we got a four. Yes. Oh, so good. So we did six. That is a hit for four damage. And I can go ahead. I'm going to be blocking damage too, which is great. I'm going to use two command. I'm going to go ahead and take the one off on there to take the one off of our horn to then place one back on our horn. That's fantastic. We're going to get a total of six damage that way. So let's go ahead and place that damage. We're going to go, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six. Can Is there any way to do one more damage? Do any of our totems do any damage? Let's see. Nope. No, oh, oh, but it can't be placed on hearts. Okay, I can't do any more damage. Oh, that's terrible. Um, but what I can do is I could still do, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, I guess, or one, two, one, here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, totally fine. We're going to do it that way, and that way I'm going to go ahead and get hit for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Five, 
<laughs> that's a lot, but that's okay. Remember, we have a totem in here. Where is it? This one. I can go ahead and ignore one enemy's counterattack, and that's totally what we're going to do. We're going to ignore that counterattack. She's got a lot of tokens. She didn't even use any, sadly. She did cover that up, so I can go ahead and pass this to somebody if I want to. I don't know who I'm going to pass it to. I'm just going to give it to Mac, because Mac is going to come in here for the last attack, and she's going to take this guy out. She's got her blade here that gives plus four and she gets plus one because of her sword mastery so she's just going to draw a card she needs a one this is going to be a no-brainer bonk oh she got a one look at that that's hilarious she got four five six that's enough she can cover up two damage with this he's done we were able to defeat all these guys they didn't even get an attack on us wow our group really worked well together in that fight that's it so she of course would get her last token we get to keep our last three command and we're going to go and see what happens to our brave crew members having defeated the monsters we get to go to 80.2 not far beyond the fallen monsters the ancient walls hum in a triangular chamber you picked up a jagged axe examining the carved pebble fastened within it someone clears her throat and a familiar face with gray curly hair appears oh mlad the god that brought you to the wandering sea hello again she says, her visage unclear and spectral, the outline of her body wavering as if she were underwater. How do you like my tower? I constructed it many eons ago, but it's in a sad state now, overrun by imps and other creatures from the cinder realm. They invaded through a tunnel in the lower dungeon and stole my priceless totems and artifacts. When you awake me, I'll return and rule the wandering sea from this tower again. Omlad sighs, fading until nothing remains. You leave the tower and relate the story to the professor at Lucra University. Fascinating! We can now explore the tower more easily. We must get in there right away. Professor Nilio pays you for your adventuring services. I gain four coins. I also get an artifact. I get three experience points and a venture card 28. And I do complete my quest 135. We're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna go ahead and take our artifact. I'm gonna get rid of one coin because I have four. So I'm gonna give myself a five. And then we get adventure card number 28. And it is an ax of cinders. It is a totem. Check this out. Gain one fatigue when you use this. Oh. Oh, no, so there is a hindrance, but look, plus three and four damage. The act of Cinderella's. I almost said Cinderella's. The act of Cinderlands. It's a totem. So I'm going to go ahead and give this to. I'm going to give it to Kasumi. She's the only one that doesn't have a weapon. Almost everybody else has a weapon. So we're, she's going to take that and we're going to return to the ship. That was our second action, so we're going to go ahead and move over to the quarters to get a couple of these command off things. I'm going to take one off the teapot and one off the tusk of Slovel. Then we're going to go ahead and gain three command, and we're going to draw a card and see what we get. We got Rage. I'm not going to get to six. I'm not even going to read it. We're going to go ahead and grab our next card here and see what we get. We have a Hurricane. The, a ruthless storm thrashes the ship. Turn back the way you came. You cannot travel this turn. I'd want to travel this turn. Sail through Savvy 7. Oh, I can do that. I got Savvy 7. I'm super savvy. Let's see how we go. I'm going to go ahead and draw a card. I just need a 5. I've got plus 2. I think I've even got totems. Yeah, I've got tons of places I can get Savvy from. Let's see what... 1! That's not going to help. We need to get 6. I'm not going to have 6. I'm going to have... I'm going to give this to Kasumi. Kasumi's going to go ahead and let us redraw 1. We got a 5. That's perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my gear so I can go ahead and get 7. So there we go. We got 7. We're going to go ahead and discard our card so we can actually move this turn. And we're going to go ahead and move into our two actions. Yes, got it right. At this point, I think we're going to go north. We don't have any more quests in this area, so let's see what's up in 14. We're going to go ahead and give a command to our coal here to allow us to move three spaces. So we're going to go 1, and then we're going to move up to 14, which is going to be, oh, look at this, 2... I think we're going to stop right there. We can go ahead and take a look at this. And oh my, this looks awesome. I'm really excited for this map. This is going to be sweet. Look at this. I have no idea. Oh, look at this. Port Haven is all the way over here. We have to go all the way around just to go over there. I think, we're, oh, okay, we're going to start here. Okay, super excited if you can't tell. We're going to go to Glance. I think I'm going to go to the actual place first. Oh, there's two different places to go. Oh, no, which one do we go to? We're going to go to 60. Let's see what it is. And that's going to be our first action because we just got here. We're going to check out both these places. 
just like most ports, there's probably a lot to do here. It says the buildings here are new. Many have still half constructed, built according to the latest fashions of Lucran engineering. The people in the streets are likewise young and fashionable. They ignore you as if all they have more important things to do. In the middle of the busy main square is an incomplete clock tower made of iron and white stone. There are five things we can do. E is leave, so I don't really ever show that one. It says A, visit the clock tower. B, go to the auction house. C, search for this person, but I don't have a healer. Or deliver something to an elderly woman that I don't have. It's a letter. So let's go ahead and check out the clock tower. Various workers bustle in and out of the tower carrying complicated pieces of machinery. When you try to talk to a worker, he directs you to the office built in the base of the tower and continues with his work. A young Lucran man wearing a monocle sits behind a desk, pouring over a set of blueprints. When he spots you, he calls you over. Welcome, welcome! You don't look like you're from around here, which is fantastic! I'm always happy to see new people arriving in our growing metropolis. I am Rizus Ven, revered engineer, mayor of Glance, and architect of this remarkable contraption in whose heart we now stand. No doubt you've heard of me. Mac whispers to you, I have heard of him. Actually, I don't know much about his engineering skills, but I know his family is richer than the gods. We have four options. Ask if he needs help. Unavailable of crystal, metal, materials, or work. Your clock. So we don't have any of those. Ask about antiques. It requires the keyword owl, which we don't have. Make a delivery, which requires the keyword materials. Or tell him we're just dropping by to say hello. Guess what? We're not doing that one. We're going to ask him if he needs any help. We're going to go to 60.2. Yes, actually, now that you mention it, you see, I have designed for this clock a mechanism called the Sherholm Blood Oscillator, which I will make in order to magnitude more accurate than a standard pendulum regulated timepiece. The problem is I've been unable to secure the Sherholm Blood I need for this construction. Sherholm Blood is a rare crystal, but it has a specific conductive and resonant properties, which make it essential for for the mechanism. I only need a small amount, which makes me difficult to in securing it all than more frustrating. This is my life's work, and I am determined to see it completed. So, if you were to bring me the necessary Shrome blood crystals, I would be willing to pay handsomely for them. Mac asks, do you have any idea where we might find these Shrome blood crystals? There's a mine nearby, just to the north, says Riza, but they've stopped all shipments and there has been no response to the letter I sent them. If you go there, you may be able to discover what's wrong. There is also an artist working on a monument on the island east of here, and I've heard rumors he's using shroom blood as one of the artistic materials. Perhaps you can persuade him to part with some of it. Got it, says Mac. At this point, we're going to gain quest 85 and turn back to number 60. So we have our quest. It is the materials for a mechanism. Rosven, the mayor of Glance, wants you to track down the materials called Shroom Blood, which he needs to build the clock tower. So we have keyword crystal. We also go back to 60, which really the only one we can do other than just buying some stuff is auction house. So the auction house is grand but hectic with crowds of people rushing back and forth across the marble floors and the sounds of competing auctions echoing off the vaulted ceilings. A woman in nice clothing greets you at the entrance. Welcome to the Nedril Van Memorial Auction House. Are you buying or selling? We of course have multiple options. We can either A buy, B sell, C ask if there are any more rare or unique items available, unavailable keyword password or auction, which we don't have, cunning eight. Let's take a wild guess which one we're about to do here. D buy food and supplies. It's not D and it's definitely not E. Yep, we're going to go for C. We're going to try the cunning eight. So if I go ahead and use some of my characters, I think we're going to be doing okay here. So I'm going to go ahead and use Kanan. He's going to give me two. I'm going to use Marco. He's going to give me two. So we're up to four. So I only get a four or better in my cunning. Now I don't have a lot of extra cunning on any of my adventure cards, which is kind of sad, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and maybe use one more then just to make sure we pass this. I'm going to go ahead and give Mac fatigue as well. So we actually have six cunning right now. So there's not much we can do to fail this unless I pull a one. <laughs> I pulled a one. All right, that's okay. I'm going to go ahead 
and give to command to Mac, which is kind of sad because I really didn't want to do that, but she's allowing this to give plus one to this skill. So now it's a two. Plus two, four, six is eight. Wow, I can't believe that happened. We're going to go ahead and turn to 58.13. Now, sadly, I didn't even realize it. We would have gone there anyway, and I would have gained one low morale, and that's it. I could have used that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fail it. That's fine. And then I'm going to pay the one onto our captain to go ahead and get rid of the low morale token. That's better than paying two command just to pass the test. So we're going to go to 58.13. Shouldn't even have tried to do this. I should have just failed it right off the bat and not even actually used any of my morale or my fatigue tokens. That was a waste. The auction attendant checks to make sure no one is paying attention to you and leans in to lower her voice. You didn't hear it from me, she says. There's a second secret auction house at the end of the bay to the northwest where they sell more unique items. I happen to know the password for the next big event. I might be persuaded to share that information for a fee. We can either pay two coins for that password. Why would we not do that? And otherwise we can pass on the password. We're paying two coins for the password, 58.14. The password is Relatold. I don't know what they're got this time around, but the password is always somehow related to the unique item up for auction. Good luck, and be sure to bring lots of cash. The secret auctions attract high rollers, really high rollers. Gain quest 18. So here's our quest. It is the secret auction. We learned of a secret auction house to the end of the bay northwest of Glance. The password for the next event is Relatold. We were told to bring lots of money, so we have the keyword password. I also can turn out a 58. At this point, I can go back to buying and selling. Let's go ahead and try to sell one of artifacts. We got two of them. Let's go to 58.2. You stand just outside the auction room listening as the bids rise, waiting to see how much you get paid. Draw one fate. Okay, let's see what happens to us. We got a four, so we get to turn to 58.17. Oh, too bad we don't have, well, we do have max ability. I could raise that to a five. Let's do that. I've got two command. I can get plus one to that fate draw. Let's go ahead and do that. This way I can get 58.8, which probably is our best result. The auction attendant meets you with a large coin pouch. Here's your spoils, she says, minus the house cut, of course. Some big spenders here today, evidently. We gain eight coins for one of our artifacts? That's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and put all of those eight coins up there. Remember, we need big bucks when it comes to this other one. So I got eight coins. We get to turn back to 58, which I think the only thing left to do is really buy, like, we can go ahead and buy supplies. There was the option to buy, but I want to save my money at least a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and spend, I think it was it one coin, and I can go ahead and get two meat and two vegetables. So let's go ahead and do that just to have some extra stuff with us. That way, if we need to get any of this command or this fatigue off people, which we have one, two, three, four, and I've got my thing, and I also can get out of five health. Why not? We're going to go ahead and, you, oh, I don't have any command left. Ah, barf. I used all the command. All right. We're going to go ahead now, and I think we have another action we can do because we moved up with the coal and we went head to number 60. So let's keep on moving. Now at this point, I'm going to guess that that's where our password is. So I'm not going to go there quite yet. I'm actually going to go and try to see if we can find where the crystal is. So the crystal I think is going to be in this mine right here. So let's go up there. I'm going to use one action to move up there. And it's going to, right there is my card for it. And that's it. We're going to go into our ship actions now. I'm kind of glad we're going to our ship actions because we still have a ton of command out on our characters and on our boards. So I'm going to go ahead and gain three command because we're going to go to the bridge. There's no reason not to. So we're going to go up here, gain my card. Let's see what we got. We have got, what's this? Coordinator repair. Each time you travel, you may pay one material repair. No, we're not going to do that. Totally fine. We're going to draw our next card. I know I'm really, these cards seem pretty meaningless near the end because those other adventure cards are so much better. Now we only have three turns left. So hopefully we can get all these artifacts. Sinking, sickening air. <laughs> the sulfuric air makes the crew sick. Navigate to cleaner air. I'll gain a weaken. So this is going to cost me two health and one command if I fail this. So we're going to go ahead and try to do a savvy seven test. And I don't know if I, I could. I could go ahead and use somebody. We've got some savvy guys. We've got Gregory. Gregory's pretty savvy. He's going to get two savvy. Let's see how we do here. Or two to it. Oh, six, seven, eight. That's perfect. I was kind of thinking I might have to use one of my command, but I didn't have to. We're going to go ahead and get rid of this card. Nothing happened to us. We're going to move into our two actions. That's awesome. I think the first one we're going to do is, or not actions, but we're going to go ahead and use a meat, two meat and a carrot. Again, to use our food 
This food is awesome. We're going to go ahead and use that to get rid of four fatigue. We're going to get it off of Mac, Laurent, Marco, and Kanan. They're all going to lose their command. And Marco has four damage on him, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of all that damage as well. So that is off of our characters. Now let's go ahead and do our two actions. Our first one is going to be going to 69. Sadly, there's nothing mentioning crystal, but it does say a group of Lucran workers sits around the entrance to a mine, passing a bottle of syrupy purple liquid between them as they stare off in a bored stupor. The mine's infested, one of the workers says when you head for the mine. Can't go back in there until someone deals with the infestation. It's too dangerous. Loop went missing in there last week. That's when we decided it's not worth the risk. An infestation? What? Did you even go looking for your missing friend? Raphael asks in disgust. Not really sure, the miner draws. If Loop couldn't handle it, must be bad. Lazy fools, Raphael mutters. What do you usually mine here? Mac asks. Obsidian. A bit of shrown blood. Some other minerals, says the worker. It's all kind of mixed up together in there. Good news, there's Shrone Blood in there. So we can either A enter the mine or talk to the other miners. <laughs> I'm just going to go in the mine. 69.1. The mine is narrow and dark. Although safety lanterns remain lit, veins of obsidian run along the walls. A scratching sound echoes up from deeper in the mine. But when you stop to listen, it's gone. We can A, push deeper in the mine or stop and mine some obsidian. I don't see the word crystal anywhere yet, so we're going forward. 69.3. The farther you walk into the mine, the fewer lanterns there are to light your way. You hear scratching and see movement out of the corner of your eye, but you can't be certain it's not your mind playing tricks on you out of fear. Then three crow beasts come screeching out of the darkness. Combat 72, 73, 74, level 18. Boom! Let's see if we can take these guys down. We're going to go ahead and take our three cards, shuffle them up a little bit, and just place them down like this. There we go. We've got Crow Beast, Infested Crow Beast, and Dire Crow Beast. Why not? There are Crow Beasts everywhere. We're going to go ahead and take our two command that we have, and I get two more from her. Actually, we got three commands. Sorry. Our three command and the two command we get from her, and we get four of our action cubes. There we go. We're going to start with Audrey. Audrey's coming in with her awesome hammer, because this thing's amazing. We're going to go ahead and use her cube. We're going to go ahead and attack this Infested Crow Beast. Let's see how we can do. We need a good draw here. That's terrible. One, two, three, four. I needed a five in order to hit this guy. Oh, yuck. Okay. So we can either redraw a card or I can just use my plus two accuracy. I think we're going to use the plus two accuracy just to get take care of this. This is ridiculous. Really? I'm going to spend that command to do that? All right. We're going to go ahead and put a command right here. Excellent. Totally fine. We've hit. We do four damage. So I'm going to go ahead and do one, two, three. And then we're going to go ahead and use this. Three. Four. Okay, here we go. I got I got plans everywhere. Check this out. We're gonna go ahead and use this. Now I cannot place this on enemy hearts, which is totally fine. So I've actually done a total of four, five, six, seven, which is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six from that card, and then seven. We've taken this guy out. He's totally done in one shot. I can pass my token, which is plus one damage. We're gonna give this to Raphael. Raphael's gonna go ahead and take that. We're going to go ahead and put her out. That was not very good. We used a lot of command just to get through that. This guy's dead. We're going to push these guys down. Raphael is going to come in with his pistol. He's got plus two attack with this pistol. And he gets four damage if he can actually hit these guys. Let's see how we do. I'm going to go ahead and I think we're going to attack this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can do that whole chain again, but I don't have the ability to get all the command off. I think we're going to start hitting these damage so they don't take as much. Oh, he does have the plus one damage token. One, two, three, four. I can do four, five, six, seven damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I can hit, I could probably do seven damage here. Let's see how this goes. All right, we're going to go ahead and draw. We got four, five, six. That's enough. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use my command to use this to take this off the horn. Then we're going to go ahead and use the horn again, and that's going to be perfect. I'm going to go ahead and use her the token from her, and I'm going to do seven damage. Four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This guy's dead. All right. Only one left. I'm going to go ahead and take my cube, and we're going to move on to somebody else. She's going to gain her token back. Let's see who the next person that's going to attack is. I'm going to go ahead and attack with something. I need to do a lot of damage, or I need to have a good defense here. I can cover up these three pretty easily, meaning somebody's going to take five damage, and there's not going to be much I can go block it. But that's okay. Let's see what we can do. We're going to come back in 
with her and the ab big giant hammer again. Let's see if we can do this. We're gonna go ahead and draw our card and see how we do. We got a total of five. I, yes, I was really worried because I don't have any command anymore. So I was able to do four damage. So we're gonna go ahead and put that out here. One, two, three, and four, I think is what we're gonna do. There we go. She's gonna take three, four, five. She can block one. So she's gonna take four damage, not the end of the world. Let's go ahead and put that on her card. And we're gonna go ahead and move her off the board. And we're gonna see if we can finish this off. We're gonna go ahead and bring in uh, Raphael again. Raphael is going to go ahead and grab her token because she covered it up with that square there. He's gonna go ahead and use his command, or sorry, his token, and he needs to draw a three or better. And if he does, he's gonna do one, two, or three, four, five damage. Come on, three or better, three or better, three or better, yes, he got a five, that's it, he's done. Oh, so good. All right, we did one, three, four, five, plus from her token. So that's five, that kills the crow beast. They didn't even get a chance to attack us. We destroyed all three of them in one round of combat. That's awesome. And only using two guys, because those two guys are absolutely amazing. All right, let's see what happens. Defeating the crows moves us to 69.5. We're gonna gain five coins, two meat, one material, an artifact, and four experience points. We're gonna go ahead and put these with the rest of our stuff, and we're gonna go ahead and continue reading. The crow beast defeated. You finally have the time to take in your surroundings. You can see a vein of bright red crystal in the mine wall next to you. It sparkles in the lamplight. Shrome blood, says Mac. At this point, we can now mine the Shroom Blood, which requires crystal. We do have that. I need to craft eight. If I fail, I take six health, not the end of the world. We now can also search the mine for other valuables. And, or we can leave the mine. No, not leaving the mine. That's, that's the worst plan ever. I'm going to go on a craft eight. We're going to go ahead and use Audrey to gain plus two crafts. So I only need to draw six or better, which isn't too bad. Now, I don't have any command. Oh boy, let's rethink this. I was planning to use my satchel, but I don't have any command. So we're gonna start dropping command like it's all over the place. So I've got one, two, three from Audrey. We're gonna get one from Marco for four. We're gonna get one from the captain for five. And we're gonna get one from the Raphael for six. So I need to get a two or better on this. Let's see how this goes. I got a four, perfect. Again, I don't know if I need to drop all that because I only would have lost six health, but this is better this way. I can go ahead and use my food to get rid of all that because we have a ton of food up there. So we're gonna go to 69.6. This should make that obnoxious rich kid happy, says Laurent. You gather the shrome blood. I gain two coins. I also gain two experience points. I complete quest number 85, and we gain quest number 91, which says shrome blood delivery. We collected the shrome blood that Razven needs to complete his clock tower in Glance. Let's go ahead and go back there now. With my second action, we're just gonna go ahead and move back. I'm gonna go ahead and go out of one. We're gonna move right back here and go, and then that's gonna be it, those are our two actions. So we're gonna have to go to Glance next time, and then we're gonna have to try to find out where this password is. It says, we learned of a secret auction house at the end of Northwest Bay of Glance. The password for the next event is well told. We were told to bring a lot of money. All right, we're gonna have to find that. All right, first let's go ahead and do our ship actions and then go back to Glance. Our ship actions is we're gonna go ahead and move back to the quarter. So I'm gonna take one off of our food because I wanna make the food again. I'm also gonna take one off of the, uh, what is it, this thing right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off there just in case I wanna place it somewhere else. So that means we're gonna go ahead and gain three command. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and draw a card, which I'm probably not gonna do anything with. Six, nope, going back in the deck. I don't even know what it was. We're gonna go ahead and draw this card and see what it is. Tempest. A horrible storm is brewing at your location. Hold the course, Savvy 8, or flee Craft 9, and I must move. And again, I don't want to move. So we have a Savvy 8. We've got to go ahead and try to get Savvy again. Let's see how many people can Savvy Savvy. We've got Laurent. He gets plus 2 Savvy. We've got Kasumi, plus 2 Savvy. That's 4. Let's go with Mac, too. Mac gets Savvy. There we go. we got 6 Savvy. We can't go any worse than that. Let's see how it goes here. 6 plus 5, 11. Boom, done. We're going to go ahead and get rid of this, and I'm going to go now into my two actions. The first one's go to Glance, which is 60. We're back here at the clock tower, and all I'm going to do is, so we've gone to 60, which then I've decided to go to the clock tower, which now we're just going to go ahead and make our delivery at 60.4. Razven removes his monocle and replaces it with a jeweler's eyepiece. He examines the shrome blood closely, mumbling to himself. 
Yes, excellent, he declares, suddenly thumping the eyepiece down on his desk. This is exactly what I needed. You have my internal gratitude for enabling me to complete my masterwork. He hands you a golden stone. This little trinket is a rock that keeps on giving. And I do hope you'll stop by to see the working clock when it construction is complete. It should only take another, oh, two or four years at the most. Now, if you excuse me, I must get back to work. So we're going to go ahead and gain adventure card 11, which is the Stone of Bargaining. Check this out. Oh, it looks awesome. Check out what it does. Pay two fewer coins when purchasing a market card. Where were you at the beginning of the game? Not at the end of the game. Still, a totem is a totem. We are going to go ahead and gain quest number 93, which is clock. It just says we gave Rosven the materials he would need to complete his clock tower. He says it will be finished in about two to four years. Again, not anything that's going to help us get anywhere. It just tells us that we've completed this quest. We're going to go back to 60. Not sure there's much here. If there is, I'll do something there. Otherwise, we're going to go back to our ship and move. There really wasn't anything left to do. I could buy some stuff, but I want to save all the money I can because it did tell me when it comes to password, um, it says we were told to bring a lot of money. So I'm going to go ahead and I think it says northwest, right? It says bay at the end of the bay northwest of Glance. So northwest is going to be over here. So it's either going to be Port Haven or probably over here, either 107 or 132. Let's go ahead and draw a card and see how far we get. And then we'll decide which direction we want to go. All right. Come on, card. Let's see what we get. Hopefully we get a like high number here. Well, I do have some command I can go ahead and use if I want to really move. We got a four. Well, I think that's going to be perfect. All right. That means we get, to, we get to move two spaces. So I am going to move one, two up to the, this is the farthest into that bay. Now, if it's not here, it might be all the way around. And there's another city all the way up on the top here. And hopefully it's not up there. I'll even show you where it's kind of Port Haven right up here. Hopefully we don't have to go there. We're in big trouble. All right, whoops, sliding the boat all over the place. We're going to go to 132. Oh, wait, we went here. Now we moved. That's our two actions. We have to go to our... Oh, no, we're going into our last action. This is going to be bad. Okay, actually, I'm going to go ahead and use that all stone we have because I'm amazing. We're going to use the stone that states we don't have to draw an event card this turn. That way we can go ahead and check that out and we don't have to worry about drawing an event because we only have one event card left. We're going to do our ship action, go back to the bridge, remove all the command from everything, gain three, and then we're going to draw a card. Now, I'm not going to draw an event card. What's this say? Lessons. Oh, that's awesome. No idea what it is. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do our two ship actions. I don't have to draw a card this turn because we used our totem. So we're going to go to 132. If it's not, it might be 107 or 77, and we're running out of time. It says here, if keyword auction turned to 132.1, it does say a sophisticated man awaits for you on the dock holding a lit lantern despite the daylight. He sighs and grants you a bored look. Password, he asks. Give him the correct answer, which requires password. I think that's what we're going to do. Otherwise, we can guess or we can refuse to answer and continue past him. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and do the password. That's 32.2. Very well, he says. Follow me. As he leads you forward, the reason for the lantern suddenly becomes clear. As soon as your feet leave the dock, a fog descends on you, growing thicker and thicker as you walk forward. But the lantern cuts a clear path through the fog. Soon the fog dissipates, and you're left standing in front of what a, a large building. You thought the auction house in Glance was lavish, but it was nothing compared to the building before you, built entirely of white marble with inlays of gold and shrome blood. Blood, a deep red crystal unique to the wandering sea. A crowd, all dressed in finery, mills about the entrance and the lobby, waiting for the event to begin. We can wait with the crowd, or we can sneak around back, Perception 7. I think we're going to wait. We've got a ton of gold, 10, 15, we got like 20-some gold. I think we're going to be okay. Let's just wait and just enjoy the auction. The crowd shifts to make room for you as you enter the lobby. You feel out of place among the rich patrons in their finery, and eventually they agree as no one acknowledges or even looks at you. You're not sure how much time passes until an older man takes the stage at the end of the room and coughs politely to gain the attention of the crowd. It's a quiet cough, but silence quiet, quickly ripples out from it until the entire room is watching the man with rapt attention. The man stares at the crowd for a moment, running fingers along his fine white mustache, which curls to a point at each end. Finally, he speaks. His tone is quiet, almost in, intimidate, as if he is speaking to each person in the crowd individually. 
Welcome to my auction house, he says. Privacy is one of our two primary virtues here, and so you may know me simply as the master of ceremonies. Likewise, we will not ask for your names, only your coin. Our second primary virtue is efficiency, and so without further ado, we'll proceed to the main event. The master of ceremonies clasps his hands, and another man, the same man who guided you through the fog, enters the stage carrying an ornate box. The master of ceremonies continues his speech. This simple box contains a truly one-of-a-kind item, the bones of a god, specifically the bones of the right big toe of the great god Valdar, master of war and vengeance. That's awesome because we found the four-toed guy later earlier in the game, which is severed during his battle with the great hero Raltold. It is said he lost one toe on each foot that day, and while we could not tell you whether where the one lies, one toe, the genuine article, is here before you, and one of you here will take this remarkable relic home with you today. I wonder who it will be. He pauses while his assistant opens the box and shows it to the crowd. You're far away from the stage, but you can make out what is, does indeed appear to be a few small bones. Let the bidding begin. We can either A bid 5, 7, or 10. Guess what? 10. Yep, boom, done. 132.11. The calm of the room vanishes as the bidding frenzy begins. You can barely keep track of where the high bid is currently. When we're going to go ahead and draw fate and see what happens. If I get a 1, I bet I lose, but anything else is going to be fantastic. Let's see what we got. We got a 3. Perfect. All right, there's our 3. We're going to turn to 132.13. You're ushered up to the stage as the losers are ushered out of the building. The master of ceremonies himself hands the box containing the bones of a god. He grins at you. Congratulations, I say, to use this power wisely. As the winners, it's your prerogative to do anything you want. That's the beauty of winning. Box in hand, you're only three steps away from the auction house when the fog descends again, funneling you back towards the docks. When you turn around, the fog has cleared, but you see no sign of the grand building. We gain one XP. We also gain adventure card number 88, the right toe of Villard. Complete quest 18 and gain quest 19. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of our 18. We're going to gain quest 19, which is the final bid. We attended the secret auction of the right toe of Vallard, which was cut off by the great hero Ral Told during their mythical battle. That, of course, is just going to tell us that we're done with that. Here is the thing we won. Check this thing out. Okay, it says here I can play it, put two of these down to place a synergy token on a different crew member, which might not be bad. That sounds like a plan. We're going to gain that. Sadly, it was not a totem. I was really hoping for a totem, but that's okay. Now we're going to go ahead and move into our next set of actions. We have one action left. I don't really know where else to go. We have absolutely no quests. We've done a whole bunch of stuff. Let's just kind of check out some stuff. So I'm going to do a move just for the heck of it. We're going to go ahead and take this, draw this. We've got to move one, two squares we want to. I could go back down here and check out 78. But I think we're going to go here and just kind of see what these little places are. I think that'll be fun. That'll be pretty much probably the end of the game. Now, sadly, there is, seems to be an unbelievable loophole in this game that with this totem, it doesn't say I can't ever not use this. So as long as you ever had two commands, you could always do that every turn. And you would never have to draw an event card, meaning your event deck never goes down, which means you would never end the game. If you, as long as you're able to keep two command with you at all time, I'm not going to do that. I could, because I don't see anything stopping it. But the playthrough is going to be getting close to the end here. I would like to finish it so you can see the entire thing in action instead of seeing a... <laughs> an basically an unending playthrough. So that's it. We're going to move over here. We're going to go to our ship actions. At this point, we're going to go to, I think we're going to go right down here to the galley. I've never been to the galley before, have we? We're going to go ahead and take two command. Why not? We're going to grab two command from there. I get to draw a card. Let's see what card we get. Oh, first off, I can, do, I can do this in any order I want. So I can go ahead and discard a card. I'm going to discard this one to go ahead and remove one fatigue from somebody. And we're going to move, remove that fatigue from the captain. We're just going to get rid of it. Then we're going to go ahead and draw a card, which I'm going to keep, and it is right here. It is bold. Discard this card to redraw fate. Not the end, not a bad thing. And we're going to, I guess that's about it. We're going to draw our last card and see what happens. 
We have Cargo Fungus, end of turn, draw four fate, fail, discard one food. Oh, I'm not too worried about this at all since this is the last card we're going to do. I am going to go ahead and use our food to go ahead and pay this to use our, Elzoria, our Zarian Smoked Fish to get rid of four fatigue. One, two, three, and four off of our crew. We're going to leave the ones on Mac. We're going to take the ones off Kasumi. Uh, Audrey, we're going gonna, gonna to take the one off of Raphael, and we're going to take the one off of Laurent. So we're going to go ahead and remove those. Then I get to remove five damage. I only have four. We're going to go get rid of that. And that's really all we're going to do. We do have to use a command to do that, though, of course. So we're going to do that. That's going to be it. I could use my flapjacks if I wanted to. And go ahead and use this to get rid of three grain. In that case, I could get rid of three more fatigue. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of three fatigue. I can heal three, but there's no nothing to heal. We're going to go put a command on that. Totally fine. And those are going to be all we're going to do here. Oh, we got to pay the three grain. I could pay two grain and a carrot. How about that? Or meat. So let's go with the meat. There we go. That's fantastic. And that's about it. We've got some artifacts, a bunch of bucks. Not much we can do with any of this stuff. Let's go ahead and see what we can do at about 107 and 77. To finish out the game, we're just going to go exploring a little bit. Just see a little bit more of the game. 107 and 77. If you have the keyword launch or lift, you can go to different places. A large windmill reaches into the sky, catching the sea breeze. The familiar, that family that lives in the windmill, runs a small shop stall where they sell grain from the mill. So I can buy some grain. I can pay one coin for two grain. I don't think I need it. Um, yeah, why not? I'll buy two grain. <laughs> why not? We'll go ahead and pay one coin for that. That'll be fun. Now, of course, this at this point, now I know I'm going to write these on my log. So when I go ahead and play again, I can come back here if I ever find those keywords because I know where they're going to be. All right, that's it for this. Let's go on to number 77, I think. We have found seagulls swarm the cliffs, diving into the sea for fish and nesting on narrow crevasses. Their shrill cries fill the air. You watch a solitary fox slink along the cliff face, seeking unguarded eggs. He nears a cavern, but as he approaches, the seagull flock becomes as one, attacking the poor fox, driving it away from the cave. We can either A, Fight off the seagulls in an attempt to search the cave, or we can make a net trap to capture the seagulls so that you can search the cave in peace, or search the nearby ruins which aren't even in the cave. Hmm. I let's go ahead and try that craft action. I've got a lot of craft. We're gonna go ahead. I got a lot of strength too. Either one of those will work. Um, hmm. Yep, we're gonna do craft. I'm gonna go ahead and use one to onto Audrey. She has three craft. I've got another thing over there I can use for three crafts. So that's six right now. Eight, nine, ten. I'm going to use one more person's craft. Let's go ahead and use Marco. Marco's going to give me some craft. Let's see what we draw. Come on, something good. We got a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can go ahead and do this. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and use our satchel. He's going to go ahead and gain a command token, and that's going to bring our total to ten, which means we were successful. We can turn to 77.5. The seagulls dealt with, you enter the little cave that the fox had attempted to explore. A narrow and dirty grotto. The halls are scratched with petroglyphs of seagulls. Something grips the grimy wall. Seven bright eyes open at once. Combat 67 and 71. Oh, wow. One more final combat before we end. We've got our two cards. We're going to go ahead and mix them up a little bit. It's only two guys. Could be too bad. We've got the... Oh, we've seen Enraged before, which isn't too bad. I only have to do five damage. Oh, my gosh. Look at the sand squid. Little 14. Whoa. Let's do six. Oh, my goodness. He doesn't do a lot of damage. Three, four, five, six, seven. If we can cover these to... Oh, eight, nine. We need to cover all this up. One, two, three, four, five, six. We need to do six damage to cover all that damage up. Now, this guy can take out in one shot, but this guy's going to be a little bit trickier. All right, let's see what we can do. We're going to gain our three command that we start with, and then we have the two that we get from our captain, and we have our four action cubes. Our first person that's going to come in, I don't see why we don't bring her in. She's going to go ahead, come on in. Audrey's got her super awesome club power of Titan Hammer goodness. She's going to go ahead and put that right here. Now, she can do one, two, th one, two, three, four. Five, six. She could do the six damage with that horn, killing this thing outright. I think that's going to be a plan. All right, she's going to do that. We're going to go ahead, draw our card, and see how it goes. We got a three plus two is five. That's enough to do four damage. So we're going to go ahead and put that down. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to do one, two with our horn, which is going to be sweet. So we're going to put the other one there, put our command on that. Totally fine. 
We've done six. We've taken this out. I'm able to pass this token. I'm going to pass this token to you. Got it, Raphael. Raphael's going to grab that token. That's going to be awesome. We're going to go ahead and put her back. And I think Raphael's coming out next. He's going to bring that revolver with him. And he's also going to bring his plus one damage token as well. This is going to be sweet. Now, of course, we've taken this out. We're going to go ahead and put that aside. We just have a sand squid left. Let's see if we can do this thing. I need a four or better in order to hit this guy. Let's see how it goes. Oh, come on, four. Better, four, better. Six, we got a six. That's awesome. So we do four, five, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need to do all this damage. So we're going to go ahead, put a command on this to remove the command from our horn. Then we're going to place the command back on our horn to give us two. So we've done a total of four, five, six, seven damage. We're going to give her that back. Let's go ahead and place that down. It's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I guess that's how we're going to do it. I can then go ahead and pass my token. I'm going to give this two defense token to, I think we're going to give it to Laurent. Laurent's going to go ahead and take the two defense token. He's going to come in now with his super awesome knives of awesome. He's going to go ahead and get plus four. He only needs a two or better to hit. He got a six. He's going to do three damage, which means he's going to do one, two, three right there. He's going to, I guess he doesn't need the token. Oh, he's going to get hit for two, which he can block with his token. So he's going to go ahead and put that back. We're going to give him the knives back. Then we're going to go ahead and bring Kasumi in. Kasumi's going to come in with just her Wakasashi, which is totally fine. Now he does get to pass his token, but it doesn't really matter because I only need to do two more damage. Oh, I forgot. Raphael gets this. Laurent gets this, meaning our final attack is here with Kasumi. Kasumi's going to go ahead and draw her card. She got a five plus two is seven. She was able to hit for two da three damage. One, two, three. Now, the reason I brought her in is if she would have failed, I would still get to counterattack. Or I would still would have gotten hit for two, but she could have still hit back for one. Plus, she gets one extra. She misses, so we still would have killed it, even if I would have missed. But I didn't miss. We hit it. We smacked them around. They're all dead. We get to get the spoils of war. Having defeated them, they, we continue over here. It says, at the end of the cave, you find a rough statue of a seagull, but its beak is cracked and falling away. Inside the cracks in the beak, you can see something, a book. You break off enough of the beak stone to retrieve it. That is a strange thing, says Audrey, tenderly turning the pages. The words are unfamiliar, but the book has a palpable aura. I can study it when we get back, says Mac. We gained six coins. We are Captain Mungy Bags. Eat your heart out, Uncle Scrooge. We got six of those. Then we also get a whole bunch of other stuff here. We get one material, five experience points, and we also get Adventure Card 84. And it says right here, Adventure Card 84 is is the uh, Book of Fame and Infamy. Look at this. Four, where was this thing at the beginning of the game, too? But look, it takes three command to activate that. That's out of control. Then we also get Quest 81, and we all have the five experience points, too. We also get this. It is ruined. It says Seagull Book. We found a purple book inside a seagull statue, which would mean if we come back, then we this has already been taken care of. At this point, I'm going to have to go ahead and draw fate at the end of the day. We got a two, so I'm going to have to remove a food. Oh, darn. We're going to go ahead and remove that. Then we're going to go ahead and go to the quarters, I guess, and remove two. I'm not sure if I actually moved this last time, but that's okay. We're going to go to the quarters, remove two. I'm going to go ahead and gain three command. Totally fine. What I removed it from was the tusk, and I also removed it from this as well. Now, before we move into this end thing, I am going to do a few things. I am going to slot some of these cards. I've got six here points, and I've got two, four, five. So I only have five. So I can slot two of these. We're going to slot, discard this to gain plus one damage. I'm going to go ahead and slot that under Raphael. Raphael's going to gain that. Next, we're going to go ahead and do the jack of all trades as well. I'm going to slot both of those, getting rid of four command. We're going to slot that also under Raphael as well. That is what we're going to do. I am going to keep this card. Who knows? We might be able to get that one under, somebody, under someone someday. And we're now going to go ahead and read story F1. 
At this point, we are going to be reading the finale of the game. So if you do not want to know one of the endings or any of the endings, this is where you might want to stop. Of course, hopefully I will see you in another video. But this is how now where we're going to complete the game of Sleeping Gods. Of course, there are multiple endings that you can go down in this game. So just seeing this ending doesn't mean that there's not anything else that could happen to you when you play the game yourself. Going into F1, a figure materializes from the dust in the air, a short, plump woman with a nest of green gray hair. Though there's a transparent ghostliness to her, she wears an apple grin. In her right hand, she grips a tall bamboo fishing pole. It's the same woman you met when you first arrived on the wandering sea. The first person you talked to in this strange world on the rocky spire many years ago. The god Omlad. You've run out of time. The Hectocron wants to rule these seas, unchallenged by the gods. He's found you, and he's gathered enough strength to destroy you. It's now or never, so you'll need the, all the help you can get. Even if you fight him off this time, he'll return tomorrow and the next day, and he won't stop until he sinks your ship. She disappears. Continue to 162. Now, being the end of the game, there is this giant fight that we're going to be doing, and I am going to be doing the fight. Colin actually reached out to me and told me he didn't do the fight, because whether you win or lose, you continue on to the end. So this, I'm going to show it because I want you to see how this fight goes, but know that you don't really have to do this fight if you really don't want to, especially if you're playing the normal difficulty. If you're playing on hardcore, of course, you should do the fight, because if you fail, then you die, and you have a totally different ending than if you were to actually beat this guy. So we're going to go ahead and restore all crew members' health, remove all status tokens, including low morale and remove all fatigue remove all command tokens from all adventure cards and the crew boards then gain seven command that is why i slotted some of those cards plus one per player of course when i'm playing by myself and split them as desired among players you may now also spend any unused experience points to buy level cards so we're going to go ahead and do that i've got lots of experience points we've got a total of two four six eight ten twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen experience points now sadly there's not a lot of cards out there that are actually going to help us in a combat but that's okay we'll go ahead and do that real quick Here's our illustrious crew. I'm going to go ahead and gain our seven command. Oh, I think that's eight. Two, four, six. Ah, I tried to cheat. There's seven command. We're going to go ahead also and spend our 14 experience points. Now, if you look at our characters, there's actually only this slot and that slot left that even can be placed. There's nothing else. All the rest of them do have all their cards from their experience points down here. So I'm going to go ahead and just slot these two. It comes to 13. We're going to go ahead and put Kasumi's right here. And we're going to go ahead and put his right here. Again, not sure if they're even going to come into play, but that's okay. So in the course of an entire game of Sleeping Gods, I was able to get two experience cards on absolutely every person in my group. So it really goes to show you that you can really get all your guys as powerful as you can before this big final fight. So we're going to move into that. Something disturbs the quiet sea. A distant tectonic pounding rumbles the ship's interior, echoing through the corridors. Foam builds to starboard until waves erupt. A giant creature emerges from the depth, deep. So we have to combat this. It's level 26, so it's going to probably be pretty tough. 46, 47, and 49. We're going to take our three cards, give them a good old truffle shuffle here, and place them down. Now, before I reveal them, there is one more card I wanted to slot. We're going to put that under Audrey by paying two command, which is totally fine. Now, we are going to take all of our command that we got right here, which is amazingly amount, a huge amount. Plus, I get two because of the captain's ability card there. So, we're going to go ahead and put that here. Again, I don't know if I'm going to be able to use all this command. And we also get our four action cubes. We're going to put those right here. Now, let's see about this big, giant, evil creature that we're so that's been chasing us the whole time. Then here he is. He's got all parts of him, his head, his tail, and his hands. So we're going to have to try to take this guy down. We're going to start with Laurent. Laurent has his twin daggers. He's going to attack the Hectron tail is what he's going to go ahead and do. He's going to go ahead and draw his card. He got a two plus four is six. That's enough to hit this guy. So he's going to do three damage. Let's see here. He's going to do one, two, three, I think is what he's going to do. So let's go ahead and cover those up. There we go. He is able to pass his token. No, he's not. He has to go this way. One, two, three. Here we go. We'll go this way. One, two, three. It covers up two ship damage, and I also get to pass my token. So we're going to pass this token over to Audrey, which is going to be fantastic. At this point, 
we are, oh, he does have to take a counterattack of four damage. His stuff does not block any damage, so he is going to take four, which isn't the end of the world. We're going to put those right there. Next, we're going to have Audrey go ahead and go. She's got her hammer of justice here. She also has that bold attempt if she needs it, and she's going to be gaining plus one damage. Let's go ahead and draw her card. She's actually going to go after, let's see, she has four damage. One, two, three, four. Five, six, I could do that. I think that's what we're going to do. Oh, seven. She can do seven damage. That's pretty good. She's going to go ahead and try to hit the Hectron head, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She could hit all that too, though, which would be pretty good. I think that's now it's going to leave that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, she's going to go for the Hectron head. That's going to be her plan. Let's see how she does. She got a three plus two is five. Oh, that's not enough. So I'm going to go ahead and use my bold attempt, discard this, to draw again. So let's go ahead and draw again and see how she does. Oh, she got a five this time, so that's good. She got a seven. So she was able to hit the head. So she's going to go ahead and do four damage, or five with him. So one, two, three, four, and then five over here. We're going to stop this from happening. Then she is going to use one of the command to go ahead and grab this to do two more damage, or should I save that? I think I'm going to save it. We're instead going to use our totem that allows me to place one more damage, but not on hearts. So we're going to go ahead and put it right here. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five from his token. Six. There we go. And she covered up a token. So she's going to pass this over to Raphael. Raphael is going to go next. He's going to take a big shot. Let's see how he can do. He's got a whole ton of stuff. He's got his revolver with his little token here. Oh, she has to take damage. She hit the Hectron head for five. This blocks one. So she is going to take four. I'm not used to taking damage. I'm used to one-shotting everything. So she's going to take four damage. We're going to go ahead and put that on her card. He's going to go ahead and shoot. He's got her plus one token. He's also got some awesome stuff here. He's got the jack of all trades, and he's got the power strike as well. He also has something that I can use. I can take damage. He can take damage to block damage, but he's not going to do that. He's going for the hand. Or should we try to take this thing out? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need to do eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I could take out the Hectrot tail. That'd be amazing if I could do that. Of course, then this thing's going to slap us really good. I think it's best to take this thing out. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need to do six damage. He's got four, five, six right here. Let's go ahead and do it. I need to get some good number here. We got a five. That's enough. That's enough to hit. So he gets six. So he's able to do four from this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then he gets plus one from his strike here. Five. And then he's going to be able to do plus one from her token for six. There we go. He has totally gone go ahead and discard that. He's going to take an action cube. I forgot to give people their action cubes. This one goes to Laurent. This one goes to Audrey. He's going to go ahead and take one. We're going to get him out of there. He is done. I've passed my synergy tokens back to the people they go to. So this one, of course, is going to go to Audrey. We have one left. Hmm. Now I think it's time to see if we can take down that Hectron tail. We're going to see if we can do it. She's going to come in with that hammer again and see if she can take it down. Oh, no. I actually, I lied. We're going to bring back Raphael. Raphael's going to do it. He gets plus two, potentially, to this. Because he can go ahead and discard his jack of all trades. Let's see what he gets. He got a two. Plus two is four. Five, six. So he did hit. He's going to go ahead and get rid of the jack of all trades card. And he has hit for four. Then he's going to go ahead and place a command on this for six. And that's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that's not enough. What was I doing? Oh, apparently the wrong thing. I did not do it right. Oh, well, that's okay. We're going to do one, two. Nope, I'm doing this all wrong. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six. There we go. All right, not the end of the world. He's going to go back. Well, he's going to get hit for four. He gets to block two, so he's going to take two damage, which isn't the end of the world again. We're going to go ahead and put that right there. And he could pass token if he wants. I don't think he can. Why isn't he taking damage? He should have gotten damaged when he attacked it. He attacked the Hectron head for three. Oh, no, I forgot who attacked the head. It must have been him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's the one that did seven damage. Yeah, so he should have gotten counterattacked for three. Minus two is one. And then he should have gotten counterattacked again for four. Minus two is two. So he should have three damage. I think I missed that before. We're going to go ahead. And now I could be using my 
defensive armor, but I'm not. We're going to go ahead and take five damage from him. I'm just going to drop that right on our doctor. He's going to take that. Gregory's taking five damage. I'm taking four damage from this. I'm just going to go ahead and drop that onto Kasumi. Kasumi's going to take four damage, no problem. Then we have a few more. We have to also take three damage from the hands. So Kasumi's going to take four, and then we're going to go ahead and drop three on... Oh, who's going to take the three? I think we're going to give it to Kanan. Kanan's going to go ahead and take three damage. Totally fine. Not the end of the world. So our team is a little banged up, but I think we're doing okay. Now we can start one-shotting these guys. This is the only person we can't one-shot. This thing's going to die real fast. I'm going to bring in Mac. Mac's going to use her saber. She gets plus five. So we're going to show, roll the dice. we got a two. That's enough. She's able to do one damage. So she's going to, or two actually, I should say. So she's going to take out the tail. The tail is done. Perfect. Now we're going to slide these together. Let's see here. She's going to take an action cube. That's the end of her turn. Now, the next person that's going to come in is going to be, hmm, hard to say. Mac's going to come in again. And I did something wrong. I for, oh, no, I didn't. All right. Let's go ahead and, no, I didn't do it wrong. Okay, nope, we're totally fine. Okay, yeah, this was, I slid out. I thought I was supposed to take five damage. I was about to put this on somebody, but I didn't realize I knocked that off. Okay, we're totally fine. We're gonna go ahead and put this back on her. She's gonna go ahead and try to take that part out. Let's see if she can do it. She's gonna get, oh, I need to do four. No, Mac is not coming in. Mac's going back. We're gonna bring in, I think we're bringing Audrey. Audrey's gonna die from this, but that's okay. She's, uh, she's doing good. We're going to go ahead and give her one of these. We're going to go ahead and see if she's able to hit. Come on. She's got a six. That's awesome. So she's able to do four damage. We're going to go ahead and put that damage right down here. One, two, three, four. She is going to take five damage, though, so she is going to be dead. But I do have to spread that damage. Now, she does have one defense, so she can take less than that. She can take... It's going to take four. At this point, I'm going to use two command. We're going to use them on both of our defensive things here, this one and this one. So there we go. We're going to soak up four or five damage. We're not going to take any damage. Done. Totally fine. I get to pass my token. We're going to pass this token right over to good old Raphael. Raphael's powering himself back up. Here he comes with his plus one damage token. Let's see how this goes. He's going to go ahead and see if he can take out. I think he's going to take out the head. Let's see how he does here. Four. That's awesome. Four plus two is six. So he's done one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Totally good. We did four damage there. This head is taken out. Now I can go ahead and use one of my command on my coffee pot here. And he's going to take it off the horn, which then he's going to go ahead, place back on the horn, and do two more damage. We're going to go ahead and splash it right over here. Now, sadly, I don't think I used her token, but that's okay. I guess he could go ahead and fire again. Why not? I don't know, but sadly he's not going to really do anything. Oh, he does. And he doesn't get counterattacked because he took out the entire head. Totally gone. Let's see here. Why not? Might as well just fire again. I mean, <laughs> what's the worst that happened? He dies. We're going to go ahead and draw a card. We got a five plus two is seven, so he did four damage again. We're just going to put the three here. He can pass his token. He'll pass his token to Audrey. Audrey's going to go ahead and take the token. Now that's actually going to be the end. He's going to take three damage. Minus two, he's only going to take one. At the end of this turn, somebody's going to take three damage. Let's see who's going to take it. I'm going to go ahead and give it to, we're going to give it to Marco. Marco's going to go ahead and take the three damage. Totally fine. He's going to go ahead now and get all of our command back. And I might as well just shoot this. No, don't shoot him. We bring in the person with the most attack possible, which is five. So she can't miss, really. She gets a two. She's going to go ahead and hit this guy for two. That's the end. Hopefully that battle wasn't too confusing because I didn't put some of the cubes back. And I've just been kind of moving health around. But she was able to take the two damage here. We have defeated him. We're going to go ahead and continue on in the book. As the titanic monster sinks below the waves, the sky grows suddenly dark. The star pattern, alien and exotic, the horizon shifts, and a solitary stony island appears before the ship. Columns of white rock stand in a circle around a tower at the center of the island, and it feels like an eerie and cursed place. Though you know you cannot avoid it, you can feel your, in your gut that this is the way home. This is where the gods sleep. If you have no totems, turn to F20. Otherwise, keep reading. We have totems. You land and climb a cracked stairway that leads into a tower. Strangely, the air is stale, as if the sea wind cannot touch this place. White sand lies in clumps along the stairs, emitting an unearthly glow against the black sea and midnight sky. Inside the tower is hollow. A borderless staircase runs up the wall's edge. As you start up the stairs, you hear a clatter of steps behind you. A ragtag group 
fills the doorway, Lucran soldiers, Zokmir hunters, archers, and warriors of Pan. A man takes off his crimson helmet, his weathered, wrinkled eyes pleading, Stop! Don't wake the gods! They'll exact revenge upon these seas! Mac grips your arm, her frown cold and unmoving. Ignore them. We're so close now. The man in red armor drops his helmet on the chipped floor, advancing with trepidation like a beggar. Stop now! Give us the totems! We've been following you because word was spreading about your crew that you had lasted longer than any other totem seekers. Even fighting back the Hectatron, people were saying that you might succeed, and they were right. But it doesn't have to end this way! A pan woman steps forward, her bioluminescent skin glowing in the darkness. My people were destroyed for defying the gods. Many have suffered under their wrath. Please give this up. Stay here in our world. We now have an astronomical amount of options. One, run up the tower as quickly as you can. Turn to F7. It's an option. Tell them you plan to destroy the gods. I need keyword frog. I don't have that. Lie to them and say you plan to destroy the gods even though you cannot do so. Unavailable if you have frog. So that's a possibility. Uh, then I could attack them, that's not a possibility, or I can give them the totems, still not thinking that's a possibility. Tell them you plan to turn the gods mortal. This requires adventure cards 83, 87, and 90. So interestingly enough, the more you play, if you can start finding those three, if you could ever get all three of them, you could actually go to that ending, which would actually be pretty awesome. But I don't have any of those. So I think if we're going to we either run up there or we could lie to them. I was taught never to lie, so <laughs> let's not lie to them. Let's just run up the tower as quickly as we can. What's the worst thing they can well, that can happen? They chase us and attack us. Big deal. We're already have, they might even attack us right there. So let's go ahead and run up as quickly as we can. F7. Before I read this, I want you to know that I don't know anything that's happening. Colin and I, when we first played, we actually had Frog. So we went that route. So I haven't seen any of this. I have no idea what's going to happen. You scramble up the stairs, and the crowd roars, charging after you. Laurent takes an arrow and falls, crying out. Oh, terrible. Laurent, screams Audrey, halting. Laurent picks himself up and leaps into the oncoming crowd, taking a second arrow. You freeze, but you're blocking the crew, and the mob is catching up. Gloria pulls you up the stairs. You crawl into a chamber lined with, an open, win with open windows. Raphael and Marco push over a giant statue of an eyeball blocking the stairs and the angry mob. You can hear them shouting below, but there's no turning back. You must climb to the god's resting place. Place Lawrence board in the game box. Okay, well, I don't get anything from him anymore. He had daggers and he had a few skills that might have helped us. We're going to turn to F3. F3, draw a fate. If 1 through 4, keep reading. If 5 plus, turn to F6. Four. Keep reading. Oh, no. Okay, it says, You climb to the top of the tower and find the gods lying on a circle of sewn slabs. The gods look closer to death than sleep, unmoving, unbreathing, still, and lifeless. The first god is a plump woman with gray hair, Omlad. Next is a woman with dark brown skin and hair, holding a shell in one hand and a flute in the other. That's Mirka, whispers Mac, pointing. Mac names the rest of the gods in turn. Zakra, god of trickery and prisoners, is a trim, handsome man with a streak of gray in his hair and a necklace of coins. A pale woman with dark hair is the easily angered goddess of earthquakes. Shroma. Rallid lies in red armor, holding a long spear and a curved sword. Orfash, god of the Mythians, has a huge bull head and is by far the largest. The last god is a bearded man in a simple robe, his slab covered in lush green grass and winding white vines. One slab sits empty, but for a crumpled feather. We must place the totem on each slab to awaken them, says Mac. All right, here we go. Again, we have multiple options. One, A, place the totems on each slab. It requires at least eight. I could destroy the gods. I don't have frog. I could turn them mortal. I don't have that. You can place totems on the slabs. It requires at least one to seven. If I don't have any, then that's the deal. So let's go through our totems, shall we? I've got this one, which is the Book of Infamy. It is the totem of Murka. So it's kind of cool that they actually the totems resolve. So that's one. Here's another one, the Tome of Throck. That's two. Then we have this one, the Tome of Riddles from Umlad. Three. Here's Vlad's totem of muscle. Four. Here's Zakra. Five. Umlad again. Six. 
Then we have Zakra again, seven. We have another one, eight. Look at this, nine, oh, fresh. And Zakra again. So we've got 10, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. We're totally putting them on the pedestal, right? That was our plan, right? F4. The totems flash and the gods awaken and all of them return to your ship. Some of them talk about how much they look forward to exacting revenge on the people of the wandering sea. Some of them talk about how the power of the totems brought them out of their sleep and that their return was inevitable. None of them thank you or the crew. They all leave the ship one by one, flying away over the sea in a flash until only Omlad is left. Max stops her. Aren't you going to send us home? She pauses. Well, I suppose so. I wouldn't want your people here anyway. You'd likely cause all sorts of trouble. She leaps out of the boat. A rocky spire shoots out of the ocean and she lands on it. She turns toward the ship and takes a deep breath. A storm erupts from in her mouth furious and unrelenting. When it finally calms, you can see the New York City skyline. It's strange. It feels like this is the dream. You and Gregory stand watching the crew with their various belongings rush out into the world. They never believed they'd see again. Second chances like these can really change a person, Gregory says. You see your life differently after it's almost taken away. You feel your lungs stretching your face up to the hazy sun. I think I can see it pretty clear now. A slow smile spreads across your face. We would not have survived without you, Captain, he says. Thank you. You place a hand on Gregory's shoulder, and he turns down the plank with the rest of the crew. You wonder if your father will believe the tales you have to tell, but when his nurse reveals to you how long he has left, you decide what he needs now is comfort. You talk about memories, the good old ones, anything that can turn a smile, he takes your hand. You make me proud, Sophie. You're so strong. I think I should have been better to you, but you didn't need me. But I am glad I have you. You touched his forehead softly. Thank you for asking me to come. I wasn't sure you would, it was so far. You smile to yourself. Not too far, you say. My daughter, the ship's captain. He smiles and lets his head fall to rest. The end. We got ending three. At this point, we're going to mark down the totems you found on this campaign in the adventure sheet. This sheet tells you which cards you unlocked. You use these in all future campaigns. Also, mark down which ending you got and your final score. See the rulebook. You can now start a new campaign, reset all cards and components in the game. This is our achievement list. It shows all the stones that I got with Colin. And then I also have, of course, the stones that we got right now. So I would go ahead and mark those all down. Then I would go ahead and count up our points. I'd have to look exactly how that works, but I believe you, I wouldn't see why you wouldn't get, get enough points today. And the more points you get now, you're gonna be gaining new quest items that are gonna be able to be played inside the campaign. For example, this port was card number 170. So we unlocked it over here by getting seven, we had more than seven totems the first time we played. So we were able to get this card unlocked and now I was able to use it in this campaign. And so we'll probably be unlocking more of these and I also have to mark out that we got ending number three. I don't know what ending Colin got. Hopefully he didn't get three or this might have been a real anticlimactic ending here on my part. But hopefully he, didn't get three, hopefully he saw something different. And of course I don't know what totems he got. Hopefully he got different totems than I did so you could see how some of those worked. Of course some of these totems I probably should have used more. Like this one actually pretty good. I never used that. I didn't use this one. This one, there's a lot of these I should have probably used. This one was awesome. I should use that way more. This is just out of control. This one is ridiculous. I'm not, <laughs> it's out of control. All right, so that's it. That is my playthrough of Sleeping Gods. I hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough. I'm, if, this is top 10 game right now. No hands down, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I can go back to this game anytime and have an absolute blast with any person I play with. Even by myself, this game is absolutely amazing. And I hope you agree too. And if you have played it, please tell me what you think in the comments below. Also, if you did enjoy the playthrough, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you know what comes next. Next. And also, leave anything else in the comments below. I would love to hear anything you have to say about this game. This thing's amazing, or anything in general. I just love to hear from everyone. Thanks again for watching. And if you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the table.